I ran out to get a pack of cigarettes, but I left my wallet at home. Yeah, that's me. I'm getting old. My name is Sonny, Sonny Featherland, an investigator for 20 years, and once the star of the predatory division of the Clawville Police Department, one half of the legendary Chicken Police. But buying a pack of smokes is more than I can handle right now. Maybe I should just lay low. Yeah, I'll do that. The most colorful place in the wilderness. For all the gods, what bullshit. The last clucking color left this city years ago. And slowly I'll turn gray too. Still, what do I expect? We're living in a vast experiment and don't even notice that everything got clucked up a long time ago. We believe in this wonderland of peaceful coexistence. Wolves and sheep, chickens and hounds. Yeah, sure, why not? It's just ridiculous. The dog eats the chicken. It's in our nature. I'm not propping up the illusion anymore. 121 days, and it's over. Retirement. What could possibly go wrong? My office lock is a piece of shit if a dame can pick it. She stood in the darkness. The light painted stripes on her body. It whispered secret little things that were never there in the first place. But she was no zebra. Reality was just a light switch away. Elizabeth or Charlotte? I was sure she'd have a sophisticated sounding name. She had a bygone look in her eyes older than this ancient building and perhaps the whole city itself or maybe i'm just drunk but she was the first womanly thing in my place for a long time so i had to give her a chance let me introduce myself my name is deborah miss deborah ibanez you're mistaken, ma'am. Oh, really? Please enlighten me, Mr. Featherland. I'm not a private eye. I'd recommend Philip... M uh, I mean, Mr. Philmar Lowe instead of me. He's a nice guy. Believe me, Mr. Featherland, it's not an accident I came to you. Look, miss, I work for the police, and I'm currently on leave. I couldn't accept private commissions even if I wanted to. Not even from a classy dame like you. Am I that easy to read? That's my job. But tell me, since you've invited yourself in, would you like a drink? I don't... I don't usually drink. Well, I've got to have one. And it'd be rude of me to drink alone. So, maybe some sherry? If you insist. But bourbon, please. Ah, thank the wild ones. That's all I have. What a coincidence. So come on, spill it from the beginning. That's better. Now, if I understand correctly, your mistress is receiving threats. What kind of threats, exactly? It's a very strange matter. First, there were letters. Then it came printed on a wine bottle's label, sent as a gift. Then carved into a brick, 
thrown through the window. And finally, they painted it on the wall of the house in giant red letters. I think it's time to dig a little deeper. If you don't mind, I'd like to ask you some routine questions. Please, that's why I'm here. Who is this dame, anyway? And what the cluck is she doing in my apartment on New Year's Eve? be cautious and smart. This dame seems shy, which I can use to my advantage, but I must be careful about what I say to her, or I could scare her off. Let's start gently, and when the time comes, we can go in hard. Who exactly are you, ma'am? I'm... I'm not somebody important, Mr. Featherland. You're important enough to deal with such a delicate matter, right? I carry out the wishes of my employer, nothing more. This means simple paperwork, most of the time. You've been thrown into deep water, sweetheart. Tell me, can you even swim? Believe me, this is just as unpleasant for me as it is for you, if not even more. You're not very confident. Are you sure you're all right? Yes, excuse me. I'm just a bit nervous. I've never done anything like this before. Breaking into the apartments of strangers isn't that big a deal. Some people do it as a hobby. Please don't make fun of me, Mr. Featherland. This is hard for me as it is. You're right. Sorry. Did you come alone? All by yourself? I took the subway, then the tram, and then I walked. It wasn't easy to find this place. And to be honest, I had to be discreet. Yeah, well, I think I'm starting to get the picture. This is quite unpleasant for me. Do you even know what you want? I... I'm very sorry, Mr. Featherland. I thought... What? You come in here, swaying your lovely hips like some kind of femme fatale. Make me have a drink with you, and expect me to believe everything you say. I'm making you drink? Well, okay, sweetheart, you had no hand in that. I'm sorry I wasted your time, Mr. Featherland. Were you born and raised in Clawville? Why do you ask? <laughs> I couldn't think of anything better. I'm not from around here. I'm from Grassmore. Maybe you could hear I have a slight accent. Do you know where it is? Where what is? Grassmore, of course. You just asked. Oh, that. Don't worry about it. I'm not interested. Huh. Do you like to play with other animals? Oh, for the wild ones. Am I that transparent? I'm afraid so. Well... Why did you come to visit me? Why not your employer herself? My employer is Miss Natasha Katsenko. She hasn't been leaving her home lately, only if she really has to. How so? Miss Natasha is afraid. She's scared because of those unwanted messages, and everyone knows who she is. So she's that kind of woman. I don't know what you mean. Of course you do, Deborah. Thank you, by the way. We're finally getting somewhere. We avoided the point long enough. Deborah's hiding something, no question. Let's focus on that. I'm sure it's not intentional, but uh, are you toying with me? I'm not 
not sure I understand you, Mr. Featherland. Cut the crap, Deborah. You're a pretty smart girl, and you can't hide that no matter how hard you try. But ever since we've been talking, I couldn't force one single straight answer out of you. I'm starting to think I'm terrible at what I do. I'm sorry, Mr. Featherland, you're right. I'll try to be more straightforward next time. I appreciate that, ma'am. This is just too risky for me. I can't take the case. Please, think again, Mr. Featherland, and let's discuss it. It's a matter of life and death. <sighs> Are you in some sort of jam? Nothing of the sort. There are simply things better left unsaid. Then you're wasting my time. I trust your instincts. You'll manage it. Yeah, and I have no other choice, right? To be honest, no, Mr. Featherland. Not really. Have you ever felt truly vulnerable? Honestly, very often, Mr. Featherland. Great, because that's exactly how I feel right now, Deborah. I'm sorry if it's too unpleasant for you, but we had no one else to turn to. You know, I get that a lot, and it never ends well. Do you like happy endings? Not in books or movies, but in real life it would be nice for a change. But this is Clawville. Not many happy endings around here. I knew you were romantic at heart. If what's between me and my whiskey could be called romance, then yes, maybe a little. Tell me, Deborah, why should I believe you at all? Because my mistress trusts you. Should that be enough? If you really like what she thinks you are, then yes. Damn, what can I say to that? Look. I didn't mean to back you up against the wall. You have a way with words, sweetheart. Did you ever want to be a cop? No, not for the world. Huh. Smart answer. Be honest and tell me what you're so afraid of. You know, Mr. Featherland, my mistress's partner is Hobart Wessler. Or as most people know him... Ibn Wessler, the Kingpin. Exactly. Feathery gods, help me. So you get it now. The secrecy. To put it mildly, I think I understand it all. Wessler. This little piece of the puzzle changes everything. I must be cautious and smart. This dame seems shy, which I can use to my advantage. But I must be careful about what I say to her, or I could scare her off. Let's start gently, and when the time comes, we can go in hard. Who exactly are you, ma'am? I'm... Um, I'm not somebody important, Mr. Featherland. You're important enough to deal with such a delicate matter, right? I carry out the wishes of my employer, nothing more. This means simple paperwork, most of the time. You've been thrown into deep water, sweetheart. Tell me, can you even swim? Believe me, this is just as unpleasant for me as it is for you, if not even more. Tell me, which part of the city do you live in? Calavera Hills? Flowerville, maybe? Look, I... I don't want to answer that. I'm here on behalf of my employer, and not on personal business. Fair point, Deborah. Let's try a different approach. Why did you have to visit me this particular evening? I have my reasons. I may look like a silly little fawn, and maybe I am, but I still have common sense. I don't doubt that for a second, Miss Ibanez. This day is essential to my mistress, and she thought it's also important to you. A message in itself, for sure. But to be honest, even you are. You know what? I'll just take that as a compliment, even if it wasn't meant as such. Why did you come to visit me? Why not your employer herself? 
My employer is Miss Natasha Katsenko. She hasn't been leaving her home lately, only if she really has to. How so? Miss Natasha is afraid. She's scared because of those unwanted messages, and everyone knows who she is. So she's that kind of woman. I don't know what you mean. Of course you do, Deborah. Thank you, by the way. We're finally getting somewhere. We avoided the point long enough. Deborah's hiding something, no question. Let's focus on that. What do you want from me? Me? Oh, don't be silly, Deborah. I mean your employer. I was just talking to myself out loud. Well, Miss Katsenko thinks you're a great detective, and you're also reliable. That's why I came. Did she also give you the lockpick? Please, could you let this go? I'm really embarrassed. Sorry, sweetheart, I'm just teasing you. As soon as I saw you, you were forgiven. That's... that's very nice of you. It has nothing to do with being nice, Deborah, but you're welcome. Don't you think this whole thing is a little suspicious? Look, Santino, I'll explain everything. I have no doubt about that. You look just the type, sweetheart. No offense. I'll take that as a compliment. Or maybe I'll act like I haven't heard it. You see, we're starting to understand each other. Tell me, Deborah, why should I believe you at all? Because my mistress trusts you. Should that be enough? If you really like what she thinks you are, then yes. Damn, what can I say to that? Look, I didn't mean to back you up against the wall. You have a way with words, sweetheart. Did you ever want to be a cop? No, not for the world. Huh. Smart answer. Be honest and tell me what you're so afraid of. You know, Mr. Featherland, my mistress's partner is Hobart Wessler. Or as most people know him... Ibn Wessler, the Kingpin. Exactly. Feathery gods, help me. So you get it now. The secrecy. To put it mildly, I think I understand it all. Wessler. This little piece of the puzzle changes everything. Why don't you take it to the police? Just go there and file a report. Photos, flashing lights, fingerprints, you know the drill. The evidence is very clear. Even a moderately talented detective could easily wrap this case up. Or just try the phone. Triple five, triple one. Please, take a look at this. Well, okay, let's see. I know Molly very well. Please note this when deciding whether or not to accept my assignment. Miss Ibanez is a trusted friend. Treat her as gentleman. N. I felt like I'd been hit on the back of my head with a blackjack. Reality tilted. Molly. Good gods. What was her name doing there? I glanced at the opposite wall, with the well-worn picture frames. Like an eternally dark hole in the wall. A missing piece. She was wearing a light silk dress and singing a lullaby. The waves caressing her beautiful long legs. Why Molly? Why now? Mr. Featherland? Santino, are you alright? What the hell is this supposed to mean? I don't know anything, Mr. Santino. My mistress told me to give this to you. She said you'd understand. Don't you? 
Oh, of course I understand, Miss Ibanez. I get it very well. But this case is becoming more and more confusing. It's starting to look like blackmail. Blackmail? Don't play innocent with me. But... All right. When can I visit? Visit? Me? Not you. Miss Katsenko. Oh, yes. You can find her at the Tsar Club. Didn't you tell me she's not the social kind? That she's especially unsociable? Or does she only like loud and crowded clubs? No, she's really not like that. But she owns the place. Judging by the flyer, it must be a very busy club. Especially on New Year's Eve, right? I'm sure you'll have no trouble finding Miss Katsenko. But there's one small problem, Mr. Featherland. Let me guess. Mr. Wessler better not know about my visit. Exactly. How did you know? Twenty years experience, ma'am. Oh, and please, call me Sonny. It was a pleasure to meet you, Mr. I mean, Sonny. I'll talk about the rest with Ms. Katsenko in person. A good friend of mine would be happy to take you home if you'd like. I'd appreciate that, Sonny. Hey, Lewis. Am I bothering you? No, 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 no. Of course not, Sonny. Old friend, what's up? Could you come over? I've got a favor to ask if you're not busy. For you, anything. Just a minute. Lewis arrived a few minutes later. He lived in the rooms above, so it wasn't difficult getting here, not to mention that he's a rabbit. It was a quick hop. The Atlas Hotel was his inheritance. It was once a well-renowned place, but not anymore. The last economic crisis ruined it, and now, besides me, he was the only resident of this enormous place. Could I ask you a few more questions, Deborah? Feel free, Sonny. So, Ibn Wessler, eh? You know you could have dropped the bomb a little earlier. If I started with that, I'm sure you would have thrown me out. You're right. He's one of the most dangerous gangsters in the city. I only know he's an influential businessman. Isn't that the same? Not even you can see the world as that black and white. Thanks for being so quick, Lewis. Can you drive Miss Ibanez home? I have some things to take care of. Of course, Sonny. <clears throat> you know anything for you. Thank you for being so considerate, Sonny. I appreciate it. Don't mention it. Goodbye, then. So long, Deborah. She doesn't seem so dangerous that I need to grab my gun, but you never know. My last cigarette. <laughs> You're lucky I don't have a light, pal. My wallet and my badge. The wallet is real, the badge ain't. Chief Blood Boil took mine, so I got this one out of a pack of cornflakes, just in case. Before I visit the club, I have to take a detour. I've got a feeling that this case isn't gonna be a one-man job, and there's only one bird in this city I can trust, my ex-partner, Marty. He's going to be at the station. I can only hope he'll be willing to talk to me. Mm -hmm. 
It was New Year's Eve, and I was driving, half drunk, risking my whole life's work. But still, it didn't feel any different. Every day was the same. And the 121 days I had left till my retirement seemed like an eternity. When I look out the window of the hotel room I call home, I see the same thing every day. A woman in a red nightgown dances slowly in circles to smooth music. The nine o'clock show with a glass of cheap bourbon and the red gown with the silent music. In the meantime, the proud city of Clawville is slowly eating itself alive. And we're still here, with nothing left to lose but our sanity, while others, the smart ones, had already gone. Molly. Does her name really upset me this much? All those years of solitude, and I still jump without question every time I hear it. And then there's Marty, my ex-partner, who hates me. But I know I have to speak with him, no matter what. Why do I feel like the past is watching me on this goddamn night? I knew where to find Marty. At the station, we'd always draw straws about holiday duty. Marty never joined in. He always took the New Year's Eve shift, even though he had someone to go home to. I understood. Ten years ago, we survived the night the press called the Bloody New Year. Forgotten by Clawville, but not by us. We both left parts of ourselves behind that night. Well, look at that. Hey, Sonny, what you scratching out over here? I heard the big boss threw you out. Tough luck, boys. I may not be on duty, but I'm still a cop, just like you. Well, more than you. Hey, you don't have to be so picky, sure, bud. By the way, you're in luck. Blood boils not in tonight. My lawyer's in charge. Oh, God. That clumsy buffalo is here tonight. If he doesn't end up in a cell again, he's lucky. <laughs> you got it. You looking for Marty, eh? I see you're still the brains around here, Phyllis. Yeah, I'm looking for Marty. Birds of a feather flock together. I see you're still the funny guy around here. You'll find the giant feather duster at the shooting range. As always. Hey, Royce. I'm telling you this because maybe you'll be able to understand. If this prickly shithead makes another racist remark, I'll strangle him with his own raincoat. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Hey, whose side are you on, you jerk? By the way, what's with the raincoats? Couldn't you find an umbrella? Why, Frank says it'll be rain. And see, that's raining. He's a frog, so he must know. Yeah, well, I'm a rooster, but I hate getting up early. Raincoats are just fine, okay. You have a problem with that, Sonny? No, just, uh, you know, the spikes sticking through and all. Is something wrong with our spikes chucking? Yeah, you know what, just forget it. Whoa, don't you freeze, boys? It's cold outside. Yeah, truth be told, I'll freeze to my bones, Sonny. Even through this jacket, I'm completely soaked. Really? I don't know why. Don't listen to him, Royce. And you? You got nothing better to do? Bugger off. <laughs> okay, okay. Just, <laughs> sometimes you two truly amaze me. What? Why are you still sneaking around here, Sonny? It always astonishes me how block-headed you two are. Here we are again, Clawville Police Department. I've never been good at history, but if I'm not mistaken, this place has been a church, a hospital, and even some insane cult's secret hideout over the years. Anyway, 
The place holds the secrets of the ages and some drunk pigs in the basement. Strength, unity. <laughs> For the love of the wild gods, I'm gonna be sick. Hey, Monica. Hey, Boss Bird. What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be celebrating somewhere? Every day's a holiday since I got out of here. I can tell. But what are you doing here? Are you here for a file? You know, I'm a little busy right now. Yeah, you could look after a few things for me, but first, I'd like to talk to Mr. Big Beak McChicken himself. Those two prickly assholes told me he's emptying the magazines in the hole. Like always. And if he carries on like that, he's gonna use up all our ammo. So it would be nice if you drag him out of there. You know how this day is for him. <laughs> for him? You know I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, I know. Okay, so just sign here and you're good to go. Thank you, darling. Don't mention it, boss bird. Hey, Sonny, is everything all right? Sure, everything's fine, Ma, and I'm just distracted. That's nice. Life is best if you let the adventures take you with them. <laughs> Jeez, Mon, don't read so many romantic novels. That was one of yours, actually, from the old Sonny. You used to love saying nice little things like that, remember? I try not to. We can't erase the past because we are the past ourselves, am I right? Stop that right there. Okay, okay. I'm just joking. Yes, boss bird? Nothing. Uh, carry on. I'll, uh, I'll be fine. Just don't make a mess, okay? Mort, you scabbiest beast. What the hell did you do? <laughs> Morty to you, sunny boy. Everything's fine. There was just a bit of trouble in the bar, and uh, someone got knocked on the head with a glass. It wasn't my fault. I'm as blind as a bat, am I right? <laughs> Did that ever bother you, Morty? Listen, sonny boy. Go tell them to leave me alone, eh? It's New Year's Eve, after all, and I didn't even do anything wrong. Not that wrong. Where's your little lapdog to get you out of this mess? Is that little pimp of a midget still sniffing around you? Uh, Jesse is a good boy, Sonny. And he's good to me, believe me. Oh, God, spare me the details. When will you finally realize that little shit's been using you? Oh, of course he's using me. <laughs> what could a pretty boy like him want from this old monster? It's still sunny. I have no one else. Do you understand that? Don't you? Even you deserve better, pal. By the way, you look horrible, even for yourself. Are you feeling okay? Well, I'm not what I used to be. But neither are you, judging from your voice. But I'm seeing a doctor, sonny boy. I really am. Are you? Don't need to, Mort. I'm fine. Anyway, if Bubo prescribed you something, don't even think about taking it. I don't talk to that insane owl. Damn right. Please, say something on my behalf, okay? I really don't have time for this detective buffalo shit. Hey, careful with that. Buffalo Malloy is the chief today. <laughs> like I care. I'll try to speak for you, but keep it down till then, okay? You don't need this shit, and I don't need it either. Sonny boy, you've always been a good friend. <laughs> More like a clucking pigeon. Tell me, sonny boy, how's Molly and the little Tiki? You really know how to hurt a guy. Is something wrong? They no longer live with me, Mort. 
for a few years now. And to be honest, we're not really in touch. I'm sorry, pal. I didn't want to reopen old wounds. It's all right, Morty. Let's drop it. Everything all right, Lizard Wizard? Yeah, it will be as soon as I'm out of here. Holy wild ones, look what the cat dragged in. Hello to you too, Bosco. I see you're busy, as always. Eh, I've been sniffing around one of the rundown joints. You know how it goes. And boom, this son of a lizard comes flying out the window. I didn't know the lizards could fly. <laughs> so, Mort was being a bad, bad boy again. Nothing unusual. And you? Still dying? I'm still a cop for another 121 days, Bosco. It's as unpleasant to me as it is to you. All right, all right. No need to bite. I wasn't trying to mess with you. You have Moses and Plato for that. And of course, blood boil. Let's hope I won't run into any of them tonight. Looking for Marty, eh? Ever since you left, he's kind of lost. He's trying to hide it, but he's not the same bird. Well, I don't think we'll have a teary reunion thinking about how we parted. Let me give you some advice, Sonny. Let him rage. He'll be the same after that. Anyway, he was the one that shot you, right? You should be mad, not him. It's not that simple, Bosco. But we'll see how he reacts. Thanks anyway. No worries, pal. How are the pups? They're real monsters. Life's a living hell. But it'd be even worse without them, you know? Yeah, you're telling me. Oh, right. Sorry. And how's life without the chicken police? Unfortunately, the worst half is still here. But it's good. It's so uneventful. What a coincidence. Want me to make a scene? <laughs> no, I'm fine without it, really. Listen, Bosco, do you need this mess with Mord? <sighs> like hell I do. Well, what can I do when he's almost beat a fucking giraffe to death? A giraffe? <sighs> Never mind, it's New Year's Eve. There's a brawl like this in every joint of the city, and you know that. He's just a loser, and also blind. Maybe someone just stuck that broken mug in his hand. <sighs> you know that's not what happened. Of course I know. <sighs> all right, I'll let him go. We don't need him yelling in here all night. I'll write the report and throw him out. But he'd better not end up back in here again tonight. I'll have a talk with him. Just sign any bullshit testimony they shove in your face, and you're free to go. Bosco also wants to get through with it, just like you. Thanks, Sonny. Much obliged. You owe me another one, old man. And I won't forget it. You can count on me, Sonny boy. I'll help if I can. This is gonna be a hard ride. Last time we saw each other, he had a smoking gun in his hand and I was bleeding. I don't know how we can get past that, but it's worth a try. Marty. Oh, well, look who's here. Hello, boss bird. Were you lost? This is the PD building, you know. Got this shit, Marty. We're better than this. Well, at least you are. Better than anyone, huh? Marty, come on, let's forget that. What's past is past. Yeah, easy for you to say, Sonny. Damn it, Marty. You shot me, remember? I almost bled to death. Hell yeah, I remember. Unfortunately, my aim wasn't good enough. I need your help, okay? That's what you want to hear. Well, it's a start. Okay, I've said it. I won't do it again. 
Yeah, right. So, are you in? Just for tonight. Small case. We'll wrap it up in no time. Uh, what kind of case? A personal one. How personal? Very. The kind of case where if you come with me right now, you're not on duty anymore. Ooh, damn, Sonny. Stop it right there. I'm in. That's... that's it? Ugh. Do you know how boring life is here without your stupid, reckless shit? Soon enough, I'll shoot all the ammo in here out of boredom. Right, so, tell me, what's it about? I'll tell you in the car. Ooh, can I bring Bertha? Ah, oh, for the love of... Marty, this is a routine case. You can't bring your shotgun, okay? Bertha stays. Okay, okay. But at least Susie can come, right? Ah, <sighs> all right. Susie can come. That's what I want to hear. Hey, Marty, what about Laura? How come she didn't eat you yet? Yeah, very funny. We're good, by the way. Mostly. As good as we can be after all these years. Glad to hear it. She asks a lot about you. Really? Yeah. She always hated you for getting me into trouble all the time. Understandable. But she also felt sorry for you. Oh, well, thanks. That's uh, much better. <laughs> if I'm honest with you, she loved the chicken police, Marty, better than this one. Well, I think I'll take that as a compliment. Whatever, Sonny. So, uh, Sonny, you still limping? The pellets tore my right hip to pieces. So, yes, the doctor says I'll limp forever. Ah, good to hear that. Fuck off. Can we go finally, or are you waiting for a big warm hug? Let's get out of here before I get detained for gutting you. Ah, lovely and peaceful as always. Welcome back, boss bird. Bye, Mandy. See you soon. <laughs> You've named the poster girl. You a bit lonely these days? You're one to talk. I've heard you muttering to her. What, me? To a poster? <laughs> Don't be silly. You know, the broad in the picture really was a cop. Was? Why? What happened to her? She shot herself while cleaning her gun. What a waste. You know, the broad in the picture really was a cop. Was. She shot herself. What a waste. I was just about to go when you came in, so if you want shooting practice, maybe turn on the lights first. You're right. I'm gonna do that. Still drink coffee? Yeah, my only poison. Except for guns, of course. And women. We could visit our old haunt. What do you think? Oh, a nice cup of Zips coffee in the hop dog. I'm in. Oh, and maybe we'll get into a little fight too, huh? If it comes to that, I'm leaving you without a blink. Oh yeah, like last time? 
Those were uh, different times, Marty, with a different Sonny. Uh, well, all right. To the city, then. You don't have to come with me, you know. Okay, okay, I know. Let's go. Uh, Sonny, there's a little problem. Not so little, and it smells, too. What the furry hell is Blood Boil doing here? Uh, well, it seems we can't avoid speaking to him. Oh, yes, we can. You have your rifle with you, right? W what? <laughs> Just kidding. Sort of. Do you remember when they changed the old coat of arms and we used it as target practice? I remember Blood Boil catching us and almost suspending us because of your stupid shit. My stupid shit? I remember it was your idea. And you were drunk as hell. Yeah, and I remember you... You... you oh, shut the fuck up. I see you're swamped, buddy. I've sent the old lizard away. I don't need him to foul the air anymore. I hate his kind anyway. Well, because he's a reptile? No, because he's a good-for-nothing piece of shit. Oh, yeah, that's true. And you? Are you letting off some steam? Something like that. We'll go and check out some seedy joint. We're cops, after all, ain't we? And this is still Clawville. That's true, pal. Protect and serve. You got a room, you two. Ah, shut up, Marty. I see blood boils here. We're in deep guano for sure, Marty. Isn't it your lucky day, huh? Are you thinking about some stupid shit again? We? Excuse me, sir, but what do you mean? Great wilderness. Just keep a low profile, will ya? It's New Year's Eve. We have enough dangerous lunatics running around already. Don't worry, Chow Hound. We know what we're doing. Yeah, of course you do. That's what I'm afraid of. Hey, listen, Bosco. I wanted to ask you this for so long. Can I pet you? Just a little? One more word, and I'll bite off your arm. Oh, hey, hey, easy. I'm just kidding. Guys, I'm really gonna miss this when I retire. Hey, listen, Bosco. I wanted a one more. Oh, hey, hey. Guys, I'm re What have you heard about the hop dog? Is it still standing? Yeah, it is. But I don't frequent that neighborhood. You shouldn't either. Things have escalated there recently. Did you ever notice how much bigger the lion and the fox are than the other animals? You know, maybe all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. Huh. So that's why our king's a fox and not a sheep or a bird, right? It's maybe a little late, but you're starting to get it, detective. Hey, listen, bot one. Oh, guys, I'm really gonna miss. Honestly, I have a really bad feeling about this. What a surprise. The two pigeons back together. And without my permission, of course. Chief Bloodboil. Damn. What was that, Santino? Nothing, sir. What a lovely evening. Am I right? I don't want to hear your crowing, Santino. What the hell are you doing here? Hey, hey, hey. Careful with the racist barking, old hound. Oh, oh, it's getting hot in here. Can we just skip this part? It's New Year's after all. And you're on duty, if I'm not mistaken, Martin. Where do you think you're going? That's it, boss. To serve and protect. Sonny was in the neighborhood and stopped by to say hi. He's a cop too, right? Only on paper, and you know that very well, detective. I don't want any trouble, boss. I just wanted to say hi to Monica, and then this feather pillow showed up. I invited him to grab a quick coffee. You can allow him that much, can't you? Your coffee breaks usually end up in shooting or brawling, chickens. 
Oh, just a coffee, boss. I swear. Oh, have a heart. It's New Year's Eve, and I haven't seen my old partner for so long. How touching. You shot him with a shotgun, if I remember. <laughs> Family quarrel. For all the marrow bones of the world, get the hell out of my sight. Have a lovely evening, boss. You especially. Fuck off right now, Santino. What is it, Santino? N nothing, sir. And you need something, Martin? No, sir. Then get out of my sight, birds. We're leaving, sweetheart. Stay safe, boys. I'm glad to see you two together again. I'm afraid you're alone with that. Hey, don't make me change my mind. You won't, Marty. I bet you can't wait to get mixed up in some serious trouble again. Yep, that's true. I'm serious, boys. Be careful out there. We're big birds, Monica. We can take care of ourselves. Mostly. Okay, but take care of each other, too. Will do, Monica. Yes, ma'am. Look at these two simpletons. <laughs> They don't even realize their jackets are full of holes. For the wild God's sake, don't dare tell them. I already tried, but nothing happened. Figures. You know, this says a lot about this city and the police in general. Yeah, maybe Blood Boil meant it as a deterrent, but it sure sends a different message to the common man. Yeah, he was born into the wrong age. He belongs to a time when everything was decided by who's louder and bites harder. You're probably right. In an age like that, we wouldn't be alive anymore, pal. This happened when that old bloodhound, Bloodboil, was promoted to chief of police. If it were up to him, only dogs would work at the PD. The racist old bastard. Blood Boil is an asshole. We couldn't dress up that fact even if he wanted to. His only merit is that he's damn good at what he does. True. I guess he is keeping this whole institution together. When he retires... Bam! The whole house of cards will crumble. The hop dog was like the last warning. You can still turn back. My eyes lingered on the sign. An enormous dog. Like a neon god with limitless power over cheap hot dogs, plastic hamburgers, and watered down coffee. The cold light called me, but I didn't want to get out of the car. If we went in, we were all gonna be pancakes kept together by cold syrup. Marty's worried look shook me out of my reverie. Oh, cluck. Was I talking to myself again? There used to be such life around here before it became an insect ghetto. That was a very long time ago, Marty. I was a little chick, and the hop dog had the best pancakes in the entire city. Well, since Zip became the owner, the cook, and the waitress, I imagine it's all gone downhill. <laughs> True. But at least the coffee's good. That's right. I have no idea what that mongrel's doing with it, and I don't want to know, but its aroma is unbeatable. Are you sure that thing's a dog? I always wondered. The name Hop Dog is quite a giveaway. Don't you think so, Mr. Detective? Sometimes the most natural connections lead us astray. Who said that? A natural-born genius. <laughs> yeah, right.
look at the poor bastard. He's looking okay, Marty. Remember what we saw when we worked at the Hive? Wild ones. Don't even remind me. I'm trying to forget that shit every day. It's been even worse since. I guess you heard about the riots. Who hasn't? You know, people are afraid that the Great Fire will happen again, and those hive houses are pretty flammable. I don't speak of the devil, Marty. But to be honest, I... I have no idea how this insect matter can be solved. I do. We just open the ghettos and let the insects live among us like they did for centuries. Your heart is pure gold, buddy. But you know it's not that easy. Clawville isn't what it used to be. Hey, pal. Can you hear me? Is he deaf? I don't know. Maybe he just doesn't understand what I'm saying. Or he doesn't want to. That's also very likely. Ugh, the place is deserted. Poor Zip. You're right. Yep, the guy's middle name is Bad Luck. That's for sure. And voila, the master himself. What a finch. Uh, Sonny, he's a pigeon, not a finch. Don't make me angry, Marty. Okay, I was only joking. You still don't eat meat, old man? I'm a rooster, a chicken. Why the hell would I eat meat? I don't mean real meat, I'm not a lunatic. But a meat substitute? There's about 10 different kinds. Have you never tried any of them? Why would I? If I don't eat meat, why would I eat a substitute? Because you can, that's the point. Wild gods, Marty, stop being such a sheep. Do you fall for those adverts? Substitute isn't meat, Sonny. And if it's tasty, why wouldn't I eat it? I don't care what you eat, but don't be surprised when you lose all your feathers or you try to bite off your own leg one day. He sure didn't get any younger. Or prettier. You think he's still mad at us? Frankly, Marty, I don't give a damn. Hello, boys. Now, get the hell out of here while I'm asking nicely. Hey, is that how you greet two old friends? Hey, I'm not joking, Sonny. I got a shotgun under the bar. No, you don't, because if you had, we'd arrest you here and now. If there's still life in you when you're full of buckshot. Ah, it's going well so far. We're just here for a coffee, Zip, okay? Like old times. Nothing's like old times. Haven't you noticed? Yeah. As a matter of fact, it's quite noticeable. Shit. All right. And where'd you blow in from? We haven't been anywhere yet, but we're going somewhere. Everybody's going somewhere, right? Tell me, how much do you know, Zip? That depends. How deep is it? Bottom of the well kind. Goes down around Ibn Wessler. Holy hell! Wessler? You've dipped your wings in deep shit, boys. If you've got anything on him, don't keep it to yourself. We'd be grateful. Grateful? Maybe you're not gonna trash my joint this time, eh? You know, Ibn's acting strange nowadays. He always believed that if you want something done, you do it yourself. That's how it was for years anyway. And? But now, he left his real estate, the fish racing clubs, the casinos, and the bars to his right-hand man, Mongrel Mick. And ever since, he's been kind of weird, bottomed out, brooding in the seediest joints of the city. Nobody ever knew him to be like this. Weird, huh? Yeah, weird. Do you think it's about a lady? It's always about a lady. Well, there is a woman. I knew it. But not like you think. Is this gonna cost much? Only a favor, like the good old days. 
Okay, I'm in. That Natasha's a mysterious woman, a real cursed jewel, if you ask me. She came out of nowhere two or three years ago and landed on the stage of the millions almost immediately. Is that so? Interesting. Yeah, she's got a fantastic voice. Makes men go crazy. But we all know that's not what's important. Then suddenly, bam! She got the whole club. Just like that. But we know exactly how it was. I can imagine, yeah. Since then, it operates under the name The Czar Club, right? The old click is still clicking, right? Yeah. The club was renamed and remodeled. Everyone knows she was Ibn's lover, but she's not your usual canary. She didn't get involved in Ibn's dirty dealings. Then how exactly does she fit into the picture? Check this. A few months ago, the old rat pulled out of his own businesses and gave control to Mongrel Mick and his mob. Mongrel Mick? Doesn't sound familiar. Mick the Marauder ring a bell? Damn, that little monkey came this far? Uh, I think that little shit took advantage of Ibn not being himself. Which has something to do with this Natasha, right? That's my guess. Thanks for this straight dope, Zip. We owe you one. One? You owe me the price of a new coffee shop, remember? Okay, okay. Whatever you need. Just call us. I cluck and will. Thanks, pal. Hey, I'm not your pal, Marty. You sure talk a lot. And maybe the past is haunting me. Once a rat, always a rat, right? Aw, oh, come on, Zippy. Don't be so hard on yourself. You got out in time. And you've been living an honest, ordinary life since then, haven't you? Yeah, right. How lucky am I, eh? It's more than what many others get, believe me. Have you ever been to that place? Of course, a hundred times. Everyone who matters in this city's been there. Sorry, guys. But then, it had a different name and a different owner. Business affairs, right? Yeah, that was the dark era, Sonny. I don't want to talk about it. Roger that. Yeesh, my condolences, pal. I see your cleaning lady died. Yeah, she set foot in the bedroom once. I haven't seen her since. I didn't dare to go after her. Oh, I wouldn't want to go in there either. But what's that smell? Ah, cigarettes and whiskey. Yeah, with a hint of dirty laundry, but no, this is lavender? Ah, that. Now, that's got to be the Ibanez dame. You know, the broad who gave me the letter. And the job, obviously. Ah, uh, pretty, huh? I can smell it. She's an exotic, too. An Impala, maybe? Furry hell. That's why Chief Inspector Bloodboil hates you so much. He's jealous because your nose is better than a clucking bloodhound. <laughs> the bitter old dog. He just hates all foul. Ah, yeah, true. Except for Monica. Monica's a fairy, not a bird. So, <clears throat> what now? Well, let's gather my stuff and head to the club. We gotta find out who this Natasha is and what she wants from us. I mean, what she really wants. After you, Boss Bird. I wouldn't like to touch anything in here anyway. If it's okay, I'll just stand around and stare out the window? <laughs> sure, just do it quietly. The old days. You know, I miss him sometimes. What, the hype? Us as celebrity cops? <laughs> nah, the work, the buzz, the phone ringing at 4 a.m. and knowing if you pick it up, you'll be dragged into something terrible, because that's your job. And of course, you pick it up every cluck in time. I'm not sure it's healthy to enjoy that. Hey, no healthy animal becomes a cop in Clawville. Yeah, true. Ah, 
Ah, man, I can't imagine how you feel. The only good thing you ever had, huh? Shut up, Marty. <laughs> sure. Hmm, I didn't know you used to be a kindergarten teacher. But leather? It's history, so back off. I'm touched by the trust you have in me, Boss Bird. There are things better left undisturbed, okay? Yeah, got it. Who's that shaggy creature? That's M.B. Davis, you bird brain. Politician? Am I gonna have to smash your beak? Seriously, I don't know who the hell he is. <sighs> so this is them. Yeah, the wild gentlemen. They were role models when I was a kid. Well, you must have been a weird kid. Which ain't surprising. My idols were the White Wolf and Super Squirrel. The White Wolf, eh? <laughs> Explains a lot. You know, when I was back in Averia, Clawville and the whole let's live together in peace bullshit seemed like an unattainable dream. Those guys made it happen. The city rose from the ashes of the Great Fire. Yeah, but look at it now. And what would have become of you if you hadn't ended up in Clawville? Maybe you'd even be... happy? Perhaps. Midnight had passed, and the intoxicated madness kicked in. We could only crawl along Shalva District's main streets toward downtown. The city's heart beat differently. Ancient buildings were defaced by neon signs and billboards, like half-drunk lovers on a fine leather sofa. Great old houses neighbored by garish modern blocks. A place that makes the head hurt. The Tsar's huge neon sign was visible for miles. A blazing red sign advertised tonight's main attraction, the amazing Natasha. Uh, cops were never welcomed at places like this. We hoped we were too late for the show. We had to be inconspicuous, but it was never easy with this bird mountain by my side. Ah, so this is the famous Czar Club. More like infamous, Marty. It's not for our kind, that's for sure. And I don't mean that they don't like foul here. Well, at least we don't have to be afraid that they see you as a detective, Boss Bird. Very funny, Marty. So what are we gonna do now? We find Natasha, the broad who sent me the message, remember? But first, we need to get into the club. And Marty, please, don't monkey this up. Excuse me? On behalf of the well-respected and noble primate community of Clawville? Cut the crap, Marty. Let's focus on what we're here for, okay? As you say, Boss Bird. Can't wait for the show. The girls? New Year's Eve's once a year, right? And we're not on duty. Have I asked how Laura's doing? Whoa, hey, I, <laughs> I was just kidding, okay? My relationship with Laura is unwavering, like the rhino beauty on this picture. Interesting taste you've got. Feathers, scales, or dermal armor? A lady's a lady, my friend. Thank the wild gods for self-sacrificing gentlemen like you. Do you remember when the Clawville Chronicle was a really high-quality newspaper? You mean when they wrote something about us daily? Yeah. What exactly happened to them? Well, they got bored with us, Marty. And to be honest, so did I. But still, here we are, working together again. Funny, huh? Yeah, hilarious.
Howdy, pal. Gentlemen, how can I help you on this wonderful, chilly night? We're expected in the VIP lounge. My apologies, but I don't remember ever seeing you gentlemen here before. May I ask? Now stop right there, big guy. I get it. Yeah, I know exactly how this works. So what do you have to do to get in? Nothing's easier, sir. Are you on the list? The list? Yeah, I... Uh... Ah, uh... oh, don't tell me you forgot. I'm afraid I did, Marty. Sorry, big guy, but I'm pretty sure we're not on the list tonight. That's a shame. I really sorry, sirs. In that case, you can't come in. Yeah, right. Uh, thanks. My pleasure, gentlemen. Just one more thing. Uh, this list of yours, uh, where should we sign up again? I'm afraid if you don't know, it's not my place to tell you, sir. Uh, Excusez-moi, the, the regulations, you know. You hear that, Sonny? I do, Marty. I do. I'm gonna lose my crest from this guy. Just wait. Just don't get too excited, Marty. Not tonight. Anyway, uh, thanks, pal. Yes, gentlemen. Hey, big guy. Uh, what's your name again? My name is Archibald, sir. Archibald Conway. Well, that's not a bob. Excuse me, monsieur. Archib... what? No way, that's not even a real name. I'm sorry to disappoint you, sir, but uh, my name is Archibald Conway, without any doubt. Blackjack Conway, to my friends. Well, thanks, Blackjack. It was a pleasure. We'll be on our way now. Hey, that's your old friend, right? Wait, what was his name? Uh, Lawrence? Lamar? No, Liam. Lewis. Yes, it's him. To be honest, Sonny, I always thought that guy's not all there in the head. Nobody's perfectly sane in Clawville, Marty. But if not for this old rabbit, I wouldn't be here today. I'll never forget that. Should I thank him for that? Or kill him for it? You're reading my mind, boss. Sonny, my dear friend. Hi, Lewis. This is my partner. But I'm sure you already know. You have no idea how happy I am to meet you, Mr. Marty. I'm a big admirer of your work. Pleasure's all mine, Lawrence. Lawrence? <clears throat> Anyways, so, the legendary chicken police back together? <laughs> Isn't it amazing news? Don't ruffle my feathers, Lewis. Those days are long gone. We're just here for the entertainment. Or something like that. I see. That's a shame. See you inside? I have something to do, my f f f f f pal, but I'll try to make it for the main event. Okay, then. Catch you later, pal. Look, Lewis. That bouncer over there. Well, yes, he is a bit intimidating, but his manners are impeccable. Am I right? Yes, indeed, but it seems tonight we're not on his list. Oh, I see. Uh -oh. oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> You'd like to go in, but he won't let you. Yeah, something like that. No, 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 no problem at all. Come with me, I'll t -t 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 talk to him. Much obliged, pal. Yeah, thanks, Bunny. Excuse me. Ah, oh, jeez, what the hell's wrong with you, Marty? What? Did I say something wrong? Sir, how'd you do? Everything's fine, Mr. Aworth. Good. <clears throat> uh, look, this noble pair of... Pigeons are my friends. They're on the list, okay? Merci la mon, sir. And as for you, <clears throat> you owe me one, gentlemen. Thanks, old pal. It was my pleasure to help you, as always. The jazz overwhelmed us. There was no band in sight. Yet the music seeped from the walls like years of cigarette smoke. <laughs>
and the smell of spilt whiskey. Behind the bar, rows of fancy bottles reflected the harmonious voices of pretty dames and the clinking of crystal glass. It was the kind of place that makes you drunk, even if you've never had a sip. A dangerous place for someone like me. No matter how alien I felt, it was strangely like coming home. Welcome to the Tsar. <laughs> Here we are. Mother of... I take you to the nicest places, eh, sweetheart? Oh, does it mean you're buying, honey? Don't even think about it. Ah, oh, men these days. So, we're here to find a dame called Natasha. I have a hunch she won't be hard to find. Let's mingle and try to avoid suspicion. Just like always. No, Marty, not like always. This time it's for real. Two whiskeys, kid, and no horsing around. I've never heard that one before. Uh, Sonny, you gotta drive, you know? Ah, yeah, you're right, Marty. Hey, Longface, give me a glass of tap water, too, okay? Yes, sir. Coming right up. That wasn't exactly what I meant. As I recall, you're always bragging about hiding your shotgun in your coat so well, no one can see it. Sure. Maybe I have it with me now. <sighs> what? Well, do you see that bottle, Marty? That's a 28-year-old Golden Eagle whiskey. Of all the furry gods, you're right! And they've just left it on the bar. Someone ordered it, got so drunk he forgot all about it. So? So we're confiscating it as evidence. <laughs> yeah, well, more like stealing it. But if it's easier for you... Ah, uh, you're twisted, pal. But to be honest, I've no objections. I know it's not my place, but Laura's father went to that guy when his, you know, problems uh, had gone too far. You're treading on thin ice, Marty. No, I just... <laughs> Look, fellas at the station are talking, you know? All the kinds of things. Sonny, Moses, Plato, Bosco, and the others. Talking, eh? About what? About why Blood Boyle took my badge? About what an untrustworthy alcoholic wreck I am? Look, I, I'm sorry, it doesn't matter. Good, and let it stay that way. At least we're cracking this one together, yeah? Sure, Marty. Another lupus movie. Jeez, is there nothing today they're not trying to sell with this guy? Whoa, don't be rude, Sonny. Lupus is a timeless genius. Have you seen Predator City? God, I'm still getting chicken bumps. But wait, who's that next to him? Cassandra Ruby Fay. Nah, never heard of her. Cassandra Ruby Fay. Oh, gods, even her name makes me go weak in the knees. Watch your blood pressure, pal. Don't mind me, just women and guns are my only weakness. <laughs> no shit. Ah, oh, remember the name, Marty. Cassandra Ruby Fay. Marty, shut up. Think this is one of those movies where the femme fatale gets everything in the end and the poor detectives left stranded? Yep, just like life. You're old, Sonny. I mean, experienced. Have you ever met a woman like that in real life? Who floors you with a glass and leaves only heartbreak? Well, actually. Oh, but I, I, I didn't mean to. Uh, I'm sorry, Sonny. I've seen this. Hicks Poodle plays a private eye, hired to look for a woman, then gets into some kind of blackmail thing that's connected to the first case. And 
Hey, uh, Marty? What? Yeah? I don't give a shit. It's a classic. And kind of reminds me of the situation we're in right now. How so? I don't know. A mysterious case, a mysterious woman, strange threats, some off-duty investigation. So? Like, think about it. What if... what if we're in a movie? And this whole mess is just fiction. Marty, I think you're having a nervous breakdown. Oh, I know this fodder guy. He was kind of good in Death of the Horse. <laughs> You've seen every cluckin' movie. You know, Laura and I go to the movies a lot. When was the last time you went? Exactly 12 years ago. Oh, you remember that precisely? Let me guess. Molly? Yep, our very first date. I see. What did you watch? I don't remember. I just remember her. Nothing else. You're a clucking poet. I mean it. What weird titles these have. Hey, there's Philmar. Who? Oh, yes. Philmar. Because that's what he calls himself, right? You know him well? We had some seriously wild cases together, yes. Mainly in Averia, way before Clawville. Another place and another life. Sounds good. Like the blurb of some cheap pulp fiction book. Yeah, it was the exact opposite. But the old bird's worth saying hi to. Well, well, if it isn't the great detective, Marlowe. Blow me, Sonny. You know I don't use that name anymore. Okay. Mr. Dumbass alias Phil Marlowe. So says someone who tried to go undercover with a Feather Pillow Mafia is a turkey. Right, Mr. Turk Cayman? Hey, that was a long time ago. I was young. And I stick to my principles and my stupidity. Phil Marlowe and that's that. Don't rile me up, you old fart. Okay, okay, fair enough. Sorry, I'm a little clucked tonight. Uh, I know the feeling, pal. By the way, what are you two doing here? You stick out a bit. Are you here for a good old-fashioned beating? We stick out? Man, you look terrible. Like someone who sat on an electric pole. Don't even ask. I feel exactly like that. You want a case? Five feet tall, half of that, legs. Angelic voice, demonic eyes. Just the usual. Oh, boy. And you? Something like that. Just don't know the exact numbers yet. A dame named Natasha. She called us here. If I'm not mistaken, the joint is hers. Yeah, she owns the joint, amongst others. Well... Good luck, guys. That broad has a reputation. She's not the kind to toy with, if you know what I mean. Any useful information? For free? Stop clucking around, Philmar. All right, but just because of the old days. Look for me after you've talked to her. You wouldn't understand what I have to say about her before then. Don't leave unless you're thrown out, in which case, you know the drill. We don't know each other, I'll deny you in a blink. Good to see you too, old pal. We'll be back. Uh, just one more thing, Philmar. <laughs> I see you haven't changed a bit. Do you think we're walking into a trap? You always had good instincts. You know, I couldn't figure out this Natasha woman even when I worked for her. Then the trouble is bigger than I thought. Just take care of yourselves, and don't leave your guns out of reach. Oh, that's never happened. Yeah, this crazy cock even sleeps with his. Welcome to the club, Brother Bird. Take care, Phil. You too, old fart. Take care, Phil. You too, old fart. Just act nonchalant, my friend. 
No, it can't be. What now? Is that Olivia? No, Marty. Hey, uh, Olivia. Are you talking to me? It's me, Marty McChicken. Oh, God. What a pleasant surprise. The Rooster Coppers in person. Chicken police. But yeah, Mr. Wessler, you could say so. The name's... Sunny Featherland, of course, of course. Chicken police. Your partner is, uh... He is, uh... Marty McChicken, sir. I, I just introduced myself to your lady companion seconds ago. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy to see you. Hello, boys. So, to what do we owe this pleasure, gentlemen? Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> we, we were, um, just in the neighborhood, and... Cut the crap, Marty. All right, we're here for your sweetheart, Natasha. Oh, I see. No big deal. Just a blackmail thing. You know, horrifying threats written on the wall with blood-red paint. The usual stuff. You must be familiar with this kind of thing. Oh, yeah, indeed. It's a nasty business. But I didn't know Natasha hired a detective because of this simple matter. But to be honest, I understand. I would have taken matters into my own hands, you see. But I'm kind of busy. Mr. Wessler had a meeting with Attorney General Hamtaro yesterday, so he's rather tired. If you would excuse us. Oh, dear Olivia, it's okay. These gentlemen are just doing their job, right? And if I've heard correctly, they're notoriously thorough. So, how can I help you? We've got a few questions, if you don't mind. I'm at your service. Don't be shy, detective. Ask me anything. All right, Mr. Wessler. Let's see. Nice bunker you got here. Well, thank you, but it's not mine. Not anymore. But I'm sure you already know that. <sighs> Listen, detective. If you want to know something, please ask straight, huh? All right, Mr. Wessler, let's make this a bit more professional. How did you feel when you heard about the blackmail? Honestly, I found it ridiculous. And now? Now I'm kind of interested. But I wouldn't call it blackmail yet. They're just empty threats. There were no demands. Good point. Thank you. Are we done? No, not quite. I'm sorry to hear that. You seem a very busy man. May I ask what you do? Eh, it's, uh, uninteresting. Would you elaborate? Eh, I got a small share in the meat substitute business. If the new product works, eh, maybe we can make your job easier. You mean reduce predation in Clawville? There are such plans, uh... If you're interested, talk to Olivia, my assistant. She's an expert in what she does, uh... Unlike me. Thank you. That's it for now. How are your alibis, Mr. Wessler? Am I a suspect? <laughs> that was fast. But thank you for asking. That's solid. Just ask Olivia. She can enlighten you in this matter, too, if you're curious. No need. And no, you're not a suspect. Yet. No more than everyone else in Clawville. That's, uh, reassuring. Wessler is tougher than I thought. And he's secretive. It's time to gently beat around the bush. Were there any similar incidents in Natasha's past? I mean, threats, blackmail, enemies, or insane fans. Psychopath pianists, perhaps. Eh, I don't know about enemies, but she's a celebrity. A star shining bright in Clawville's night sky. Do you understand? She gets endless fan mail. It could be anybody. Eh, I wouldn't overreact. Natasha doesn't feel that way. I've noticed. 
Do you think one of her fans is the culprit? Someone who can't take rejection, maybe. Why not? It's quite common. It's a typical motive, indeed. Any ideas who it could be? Yeah. Attorney General Hamtaro is obsessed with Natasha. But he's, uh, more like the kiss on the hand, flowers bowing type. Throwing bricks through the window is not his style. I can't think of anybody else. Or rather, I can think of everybody else. About half the city, actually. I get it. The mob boss and the pussycat, eh? How did you even meet? Huh? Are you trying to piss me off, Corpora, so I accidentally let some big secret slip out, huh? A simple answer would work. <sighs> you know, Natasha, she's both connoisseur and muse. Uh, uh, so, uh, how was it? Uh, uh, when was it exactly? You don't remember. That's strange. Ah, yeah. The millions, of course. It was like another lifetime. It happened right here. Only this place was called the Millions back then. She was a dancer. Behind the scenes, I arranged opportunities for her on the big stage. Yeah, maybe she still doesn't know it was me. Then one day, I invited her for a drink with the promise that if she was willing to meet me, I'd buy the place for her. Now I guess she was willing. The next day, she had the club in her name. Well, that is romantic. Eh, there are many kinds of romance, Birdman. There's cheap, and there's expensive. You get what you can afford. Do you live in the same house as Natasha? Oh, you're really something. Natasha's a free woman, but mostly, yeah, at my place in Goldtown. But she has her own kind of a weekend house. Hmm, how often does she use the weekend house? Yeah, every other weekend. Roughly. I see. That's very important information. Yeah, if you say so. So Natasha feels like she's in grave danger, yet she's still going out alone. Yeah, I know what you're getting at. But I'm 100% sure of her loyalty. She's gone out very rarely since this started, and mostly in my company. Yeah, you know... I'm not sure if you do, but, uh, in our social circles, banquets and dinners are frequent. Hmm. Illegal gambling nights. <laughs> you got me there. Yeah, you're right. Natasha is crazy about the roulette wheel. Always putting it all on the red, right? Yeah, you're a real rotten bastard, Sonny. Although, yeah, always on the red. You're yeah, right. So, can we meet your lady? Hmm. I don't see why not. But first, please, listen to her sing. She's on soon. Thank you for your time. We'll be seeing you. I have no doubt about that, unfortunately. Hey, uh, we should, uh, grab a coffee or something, Olivia. You know, for old times' sake. Pleasure to meet you, gentlemen. Goodbye. Oh. Please, take a seat. The show's gonna start soon.
Sonny. That was, um, unique. Oh, that is cute. Nobody has ever given me such a unique compliment before. Uh, forgive me, my name is Santino Featherland. <laughs> I thought so. You look more or less like I imagined. More or less? Sometimes less is more, Mr. Featherland. Ahem. You were amazing, dear. As always. Could you be my little furball and fetch me a cocktail? But of course. Ibn will be back soon. We'll have a few minutes to talk. Then he'll end the conversation and throw you both out. <laughs> With all due respect, ma'am, we're not that easy to get rid of. Doesn't matter who's trying, believe me. <sighs> Doesn't matter, he'll do it. That's why I'm telling you. I don't want a scene. <laughs> My room's upstairs. Meet me there in 20 minutes. Come alone, Sonny. You'd be too conspicuous otherwise. Hey, I understand. You know, they call him Target Marty at the station. I don't have time, Mr. Featherland. Oh, sure thing, Natasha. I'll come to your room. Three knocks, a short pause, then another three. I'll be waiting. Go, before he comes back. I knew she was trouble the first time I saw her. She wore danger like a perfume. It was simply part of her being, and it attracted me like light attracts the moth people. I wanted to be the microphone as she whispers her melodies, or the pillow she rests her feet on while reading some cheap romance. I wanted to be her nightdress, barely touching barely covering her marble skin. But I was a cop, and a lifetime wouldn't be enough to rid myself of what a woman like her hides under her makeup. Keep your distance, Sonny. Just keep your distance. Gee, that is a, uh, unique picture and kind of daring i admit i've never seen anything <laughs> quite like it before yes i admit it's a little daring i keep it it evokes good memories a precious old friend of mine a most wonderful artist he's got an eye that's for sure considering his model was that supposed to be some kind of compliment? I don't know. I don't compliment often. Not on purpose, anyway. Oh, you're funny. This woman's aware of her charm, and she knows how to use it. A rare and dangerous combination. How do you like your bourbon, Mr. Featherland? In a glass. But thanks, I had a couple before I came. I feel like this may be a long night. I hope it doesn't bother you if I have one myself. I get offended if women don't drink in my company. Oh, you are a funny guy. So I've been told. Anyway, uh, lovely room. Yes. Look, Mr. Featherland. It's sunny. Saves us a lot of time. Okay, Sonny. So, why am I here? You know, men tend to babble in my presence. It must be exhausting. It is. But you're not the type to beat around the bush. Is it too banal if I tell you it's an occupational hazard? Terribly. So can I start the unpleasant questions? I've asked you here so you can do what you do best. 
Really? I thought you asked because you wanted me to investigate for you. But if you'd rather be drinking... Oh, you do have a sense of humor. How reassuring. Only if I'm a bit hungover. That's usually quite common. Oh, please drop the act about being the alcoholic, heartbroken ex-cop, Sonny. It would undoubtedly suit you, but um, I've seen you scanning my room. From the second you set foot in here, you started working, and everything I say gets sorted in your brain. Am I right? That's a bit of an exaggeration, but yeah, it's something like that. Well then, Sonny, come at me. Oh, that's something I don't hear often. With pleasure. Natasha is a confident woman. I can exploit that. But I must be careful. Every part of her oozes danger. That was a remarkable performance. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Do you perform here frequently? You're also the owner, if I'm not mistaken. Sadly, I don't have the time. But the stage still calls my name. And I perform just a few times a year. And always with a new song. So that was all the excitement. I have many admirers, if that's what you mean. Yes. The place is very elegant, and uh, so's your room. Why, thank you. I kind of feel like I'm in a museum. Well, that depends on the kind of museum. The kind with nice things. Oh. Suspiciously nice things, just like you. Do you think I'm suspicious? We'll see about that. Try me. Do you think one of your admirers might be behind the threat? Those who admire me usually idolize me. No, I don't think it's one of them. You know, the soul of an animal is extremely complicated. Sometimes all it takes is a bad look or some small rejection to turn admiration into hate. That's a stillborn theory. No one hates me if they once loved me, Mr. Detective. Ah, I see. Do you have any material evidence concerning the threats? You may think I'm irresponsible, but I didn't keep any of it. I simply couldn't bear to look at them. Didn't you think maybe the police would need it? I didn't think I needed the police. Moreover, do you think the girlfriend of Ibn Wessler could ever turn to the cops? I see. So, what about me? How do I come into the picture? It sounds ridiculous, but you're my last hope. That does sound ridiculous, but I accept my ego and old habit. You can't do anything else, can you? Something like that. A leopard can't change its spots. Deep behind the diamond skin lies the truth. It doesn't matter how hard Natasha's trying to hide it. She's scared. Now I must concentrate to finally find out what I want to know. What was in those threats, exactly? The message itself is not a threat. It's just a word. But a word again and again is threatening. Exactly. So? You really don't have any idea? Which word could be used for a woman like me? I guess I do. Yes, I think I know what it could be. Poor. <clears throat> Cat got your tongue? Am I right? You heard it. I said what you were thinking, and yes, that was in the message. That was printed on the paper and painted on my wall, in giant red letters. Well, thank you for your honesty.
What about Philmar? Is he here because of you? Mr. Lowe helped me before, and yes, he was the first I approached. You've managed to curb my enthusiasm a little. Doesn't keeping two irons in the fire give me a better chance? But you don't have to worry. He didn't find anything. And he's not interested anymore, no matter how much I offer to pay him. Why? You'll have to ask him. I think I'll do that. A dark shadow from the past. An ex-lover. A husband, maybe. I'm surprised you asked that just now. Well, I have my habits. Some call my methods peculiar. What a curious way to put it. I'm a curious kind of fellow. So? I've never been married, and I don't really have any serious relationship before Hobart. A more dangerous, not serious relationship, maybe? I've never been with anyone long enough for them to hate me. Love is just another face of hate. So is hate a face of love, then? I guess. Were you on the run? No, Mr. Featherland. I came to Clawville with a clean slate, and I'd like to believe it will stay that way. You mean as the girlfriend of Ibn Wessler, the biggest mob boss in Clawville? Yeah, good luck with that. Natasha is a mysterious woman, but I must gouge out at least one of her secrets. Enough games. It's time to know why I'm here. Let's stop beating about the bush. How do you know Molly? I'm prepared for that question, but it's still not easy. You knew very well that if you threw in the name of my wife, I'd come to you no matter how vague and suspicious the case was. I just want to know if you're simply a manipulator or you're really that desperate. I really know her. I'm not lying. Oh, really? How? Were you a nurse, too? Forgive me, but I don't think so. Don't be rude and so cynical, Sonny. I'm sorry, but that's me when feline claws are at my throat. Molly is an old and good friend of mine. She has nothing to do with this, but I knew that if I didn't mention it to you, you wouldn't have come. Yeah, Natasha, you're right there. I knew you were a decent fowl, that you would help me. That's what you're famous for. Don't go there. Flattery doesn't work. Look, forgive me. I shouldn't have brought your wife into this. You're right, you shouldn't have. But to be honest, I don't think she's my wife anymore. On paper she is, but I haven't seen her in years. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Really? <sighs> I, I did. I knew I checked you out before I sent Deborah. Cluck me. This case is getting more and more intriguing. You played me from the start, didn't you? It wasn't my intention. I'm an old cock, Natasha. I've played too many of these games, and I've been on the losing side often enough. So, you're going to walk away? You're damn right. I don't know if it's worth it for me. Look, Sonny, money's not an issue. Oh, yeah, your fawn had already mentioned that. But unfortunately, it'll be hard to spend all that dough when I'm dead. Dead? Don't even say that. Do you have a gun? Me? Of course you, Natasha. Do you have it on you? Not at the moment. Well, let me give you some advice. Keep it with you, always. Maybe in your purse. You, you don't think they, whoever they are, would hurt me? Don't be naive, Natasha. You're right. I'll keep it with me. I don't want to scare you, but two cops snooping around can mess something like this up, even if it's just two roosters. You'll keep snooping? Thank you, Sonny. Maybe you're getting yourself into even deeper trouble with me. Thank me when this is all over. Natasha is a confident woman. That was a remark. The place is very elegant, and uh, so's your. Do you?
you think one of your admirers Do you have any material ever? Deep behind the diamond skin lies the truth. What was in those threats, exactly? No one's ever seen the culprit, not even a shadow. That's one of the most curious things. Ibn has men everywhere, literally my shadows, ghosts in every alley, but no one saw anything. One of them could be the culprit. Ibn pays his animals well, and he's the most dangerous man in the city. A combination that nullifies your theory, I believe? Maybe, ma'am. Love is capable of insane miracles and miraculous insanity. What poetry. Did you ever think about writing a book? Never. I'm afraid I'd learn too much about myself. Maybe that's the point. I would read about you. Not like the chicken police pulp fiction. Furry hell. Do you read that trash? Like everyone else in the city. Oh, great. I think it's flattering. Even as badly written tales of heroes in the gutter. You enjoy it? Well, just a little, Sonny. Just a little. A dark shadow from the past. An ex-lover. A husband, maybe. I'm surprised you asked that just now. Well, I have my... Natasha is a mysterious woman, but I must gouge out at... Let's stop beating about... You played me from the... Just one more thing, Sonny. Natasha? Please, come to... 37 Rochester Street, in Flower Town, tonight. I'd like to show you something that could be of a great help in your investigation. I was afraid this was coming. Why there? Why not here and now? It's something I keep hidden there. I won't take the risk of Ibn or one of his men seeing it. Isn't Ibn too dangerous to keep secrets from? Sonny... A woman is naked without her secrets. Hmm. I knew you would understand. Oh yeah, I understand everything. So, when do we meet? The night is almost over. I'll be there in an hour. Don't be early, and don't be too late. Look, Natasha, you know... Please, this is very important to me. Sure, I get it. I'll be there. Thank you. Until later, Natasha. Goodbye, Sonny. Why did you name it the Czar Club when you took over? It was the millions before. Maybe you can guess my origins from my name and my accent. I come from the Eastern Tsardom of Slavonia. We are quite respectful of our leaders. Do you feel that's not the case here in Clawville? Here? No. Absolutely not, Mr. Featherland. Many here don't even know the name of their king. To them, he's only the Fox King. It's quite disrespectful and rude. There's some truth to that. Where I'm from, we choose our leaders ourselves. And whatever they do later, we proudly stand by our decision. So that's why the name, in respect to your country. <sighs> Don't take me for so sentimental. It's only partly the reason. We lived there until I was 14. Then we, we had to flee. It doesn't matter why. In the end, I was the only one who made it to Clawville. So the name isn't because of nostalgia or respect. More like a reminder. May I be brash? It's New Year's Eve. Everything goes tonight. Ibn, do you love him? In my own way, yes, I do. 
Whatever that means. You can't understand this, Sonny. There are women who can't actually love. Not like they're supposed to. But that doesn't mean they don't love however they can. That's not a real answer, is it? <laughs> if you only accept yes or no, then yes, I love him. So, who's this Olivia bird? I know well what you're curious about. You want to know if she's sleeping with Ibn. The thought may have crossed my mind. You men. But guess what? Maybe she does. You don't care? As long as he loves me, I don't. Well, that's your business. What do you know about her? She's not the one threatening me. You can be sure of that. I know that was your next thought. The lovesick assistant is jealous of the boss's girlfriend and wants to flick her out of the picture. It would even stand up, but Olivia doesn't have feelings. If she let Ibn sleep with her, it's because she does what he says, nothing more. That was so honest and raw, I'm inclined to believe it. Well? Weren't you supposed to be waiting in the car? I was bored to tears, Sonny. I also thought maybe something happened to you. You thought Natasha had eaten me alive, huh? Well, who knows? You're such a fragile little thing. I'm too old for this, Marty. Then next time, leave the dangerous predators to me. I didn't mean that, Marty. I meant you. Oh. talk to Natasha? In fact, yes. She was, uh, kind of mysterious. I bet she was. You know, I've never abandoned a case before. Not voluntarily, anyway. But that woman... You're, uh, too old for this shit, huh? <laughs> As you say, pal. That's exactly how I felt, too. Before you leave, take this and examine it closely. What is it? reason I've decided all of this is not worth it for me. Wow, that sounds encouraging. Take care of yourselves, guys. This case, maybe it goes deeper than you'd think. Oh, that makes my feathers stand on end. Ah, old croakers. You're safe while I'm here. Okay, okay, I didn't say anything. We stepped into it, didn't we? We stepped into it, didn't we? Of all that's furry, what kind of a list is this? Exactly. I have no idea, but I don't even want to find out. Those names, all top dogs. Maybe they play cards together. Sure, that's very likely. Anyway, I pried this list out of a dead man's hand. Somebody dropped him outside the forest, a few miles from the Wessler residence. I should have known she was keeping secrets. Keeping secrets? She's the secret herself. Thanks, Philmar. This could be important. Ah, uh, don't thank me. Maybe I've just signed your death warrant. Oh, thank you, sir. Ah, oh, shut up, Marty. Excuse me, pal. My name is Santino Featherland. Eh? Gabriel, what do you want, chickens? Do you happen to know where Mr. Wessler went? Do you take me for a fool? Get out of here while I'm in a good mood, birds. Okay. Thanks, big boy. Listen, pal. Uh, maybe if... Uh... Did I stutter, chicken? Get lost. Wessler's secretary. It's worth a try, Marty, but let me do the talking. She's not very fond of you. Yeah, what can I say? You know, back in the day, I flew from tree to tree. 
I was a free bird. Maybe I was playing her a bit. Oh, it's you. How can I help you, gentlemen? Look, we really don't want to dig into your personal life, but... But what exactly is my relationship with Mr. Wessler? And how close am I to him? You don't beat around the bush, ma'am. Well, actually, I remember. I don't have time to chit-chat, Mr. Featherland. So yes, I'm not one to beat around the bush. And no, I'm not sleeping with Mr. Wessler. <laughs> well, thanks for the uh, quick and straight answer. Anything else? Look, uh, Olivia, you know, last time... Please, Marty, there's no need. Yes, there is. I know I wasn't a gentleman, and I know I should have called you, but I was young and... You don't have to explain. I wasn't waiting long for your call. I forgot about it fast. That's good to hear, I suppose. I'm sorry we disturbed you. Not at all. Have a nice evening, gentlemen. I don't know, Sonny. What exactly are we doing here? Let's hope we can learn something about Natasha and Ibn by sniffing around before we visit that weekend house in Flowerville. Learn something from Phyllis and Roy's? Well, I wasn't exactly thinking about them. Yeah, figures. Where are the insects, anyway? And the reptiles? Did you ever think about that? Many times. I think they didn't fit the idyllic image, so they've been left out. Simple as that. Uh, that says a lot about this city. It says everything, Monty. Did you know there's a theory that the Foundation War was a hoax? That the reptiles deliberately kept in the background, but in reality, they're the ones controlling the city from the underground even now. What? Where did you hear that? I'd never heard such sheep shit before. I read it in Tomorrow's Word. That's a pretty prestigious newspaper. I wouldn't use that trash to wipe my cloaca, Marty. It'll rot your brain. Well, at least I read something other than the labels on liquor bottles. Hey, that was a bit below the belt. Yep, but true. You got me. Good old Bosco's slowly becoming the same piece of furniture we are. Sure. You remember when he was just a little green lap dog? For a while, we even had to babysit him. He always was a talented little pooch, I have to admit. But the filth that seeped into everything in Clawville has reached him, too. It reaches everyone one way or another, right? One way or another, it does, Marty. You had a fight once, didn't you? At one of the winter solstice parties. Yeah, we both drank too much. It was over a manatee named Margaret. That was before Laura, of course. I haven't seen many fights that memorable in my life. Yeah, and the girl didn't go with either of us. She was a wise manatee. Listen, Bosco, what do you make of this list? Maybe it's the guest list of some fancy ball. These are some rather influential names, the ones I recognize anyway. Movie stars, politicians, a few names from the Council of Twelve even, if I'm not mistaken. You're not. Are you blackmailing them? Because if you are, I'll gladly accept a nice big juicy bone in exchange for my silence. Stop screwing around, Bosco. It has nothing to do with our case. Which is what, exactly? Mm, we're still not gonna tell you. Nice cup of coffee a la Zip, huh? We're not here for the coffee, Marty. Zip always knows more than what he lets on. It'd be worth interrogating the old trash panda. If he forgave us for wrecking his joint last time, 
He'll never forgive us, Marty, but we helped him out of trouble so many times, he's not gonna have any choice. I hope you're right, old bird. Ah, jeez, boys. Out of 2,000 joints in the city, you had to end up here, huh? Hello to you too, Zip. How's it hanging? I had no problems, until now. Ah, oh, don't be such a drama queen. We just want to ask you a couple of questions, then we're out of here. And we won't even trash your place this time. What do you say? I say let's get it over with very, very quickly, chickens. Relax, pal. We'll be as fast as a hummingbird. I'm not your pal. And you're as far from a hummingbird as I'm from a polar bear. Oh, come on, Zip. Don't be so hard on yourself. Damn it, what's the scribbler doing here? Sniffing some juicy story. I think I still owe him a great big left hook. What did he do this time? Oh, nothing. Just since I first met him, I wanted to punch him in the face. I can understand that. Hello, Timothy. Scribblers don't celebrate New Year's. Hello, boys. <laughs> what a pleasure to see you. Answering your question, no, not really. Not me, anyway. I'm always where the story is. Mm-hmm. And where's the story now? I can't see it anywhere. It just stepped through the door, pal. Oh, you mean us. Well, I think I'll have to disappoint you. The chicken police are back together? I, I can't let that go without an ink stain, am I right? No, Timmy, you can. We're not working, we're just having a little fun, that's all. Mm, I'm not buying that, boys. You'll have to, Tim. Eh, we'll see about that. Is that rag you work for still around, Tim? You mean the most read and highest ranking newspaper of the city, the Clawville Chronicle? Oh yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> I see that you still have your famous sense of humor, Sonny. Such a joy. <laughs> yeah, I do. Well, if there's one thing I'd learned during 20 years of detective work, it's that if someone wants to meet you at a remote location at night, you should bring an army for backup. One time, me and Marty were stupid enough to underestimate a situation like that, and we never really recovered. And yet, here we were again, about to step alone into something hauntingly familiar. Only one tactic remained, as the old dogs say. Balls to the wall. Ugh, this place gives me the creeps. I wouldn't say I like it either. Textbook. I'm telling you, it's a trap. Shut up, Marty. Damn. It's not a good sign. Maybe she just lost it when she hurried into the house. Yeah, right. Do you think it belongs to Natasha? No idea. Do you think I measured her feet when I was in her room? Not sure I want to know, but I wouldn't be surprised. So, this is the word. What can I say? The message is loud and clear. Yeah, what matters is who is it for and what does it mean? I can't misunderstand that if I wanted to. We'll see. Wait a second, did that bimbo put a spell on you? As you used to say, don't let it cloud your objective judgment, boss bird. Watch who you're talking to, boy. Marty, before we enter, did you bring Big Bertha? Of course. She's in the trunk. It's time to get Her Majesty out. That's what I like to hear. Let's go. Hello, my beauty. Just don't point it at me. Aw, scared? Take it easy. I swore I'm not gonna shoot you again. Very gallant of you, partner. Why, are you still pissed at me? I'm happy to remind you why you got shot the first time. 
I get it. Just shut the fuck up already. It's the nothing. Uh, what was that? Eh, forget it. Just an old quote from a movie. It means it's fucking dark in here. <sighs> Flashlight. I didn't bring one. Uh, me neither. What a pair of fucking professionals. Yep. But you do have a shotgun with you. We should have shotguns for this kind of deal. Is that from an old movie? No, it's an original. Figures. She was lying on the floor as if she was sleeping. She looked peaceful, almost. The large pool of blood ruined the picture. Poor, delicate Deborah. Maybe you were too pure and innocent for this city. But in the end, its filth pulled you under. You know, no animal can swim in high heels. Wild gods! Fuck, even! Yeah, it's her. Deborah, the girl who came to my office. I figured, but what the hell happened? Was it Natasha? Is this what you wanted us to see? No. I mean, I don't think so, Marty. She seemed very attached to the girl, and I believed her. Furthermore, she has no motive to kill her. Natasha meant some object. Something maybe the killer wanted, too. And the poor girl was trying to protect it. Did she seem that kind of girl? She risked a lot simply by coming to see me. She would have done it for her mistress. Why is she naked? Was this sexual? I mean, there's no sign of struggle. She seems untouched. Maybe she knew her assailant. Was it a lover? This looks premeditated. So far, the messages have appeared in weird places, but this, this is a new level. It's no longer just about empty threats. Well, maybe Natasha's on her way here right now. Or, she was already here and something happened to her, too. Kidnapped, or worse. Those are possibilities, but we can't wait. We don't have time for guessing. Search the house. Search everything. The room's not trashed. Whoever did this wasn't looking for the same thing we are. Or they knew exactly where to find it. Wait, what are we looking for exactly? I have no idea, but it's something important. Things like that have a way of getting noticed when you come across them. Amen to that. The message. Here, too. Yes, but this isn't about Deborah, and wasn't meant for her. It was meant for Natasha. Obviously. What have we gotten ourselves into, Sonny? I don't know, Marty, but... Let's get ourselves out of it as soon as possible. Anything interesting in there? Yeah, I think there is. SN. Could be the initials of a person, a, a place, a company, or a club. Too many possibilities but we must find out where it's from. It's an exceptionally beautiful piece. What does it depict, I wonder? I have no idea, Sonny. It's so art, I'm scared to have an opinion. Nice. Yeah, it really is. This must be Natasha's family. Yeah, wealthy. Do you think she's from the Stavonian Tsar's family? Oh, nobody could have survived that massacre. But I'm sure this family was also close to the fire. What is she doing here anyway? What, an alias? Keeping secrets, and now this case? Do you think it's all connected somehow? Let's not draw hasty conclusions, Marty.
This... What is this exactly? A human. Mythical creature. Quite the cult in Iveria. The whole country is full of these statues. Does it mean anything? They say humans are the keepers of secrets and the messengers of chaos and destruction. You don't think... Let's take a closer look. Just like in the adventure books. Rich animals are all insane. You have a point. Well, you can't be serious. <laughs> Is this some kind of... Yeah, it's a riddle, Marty. But it doesn't make any sense. Why use something as simple as this when a four-digit number is almost impossible? An idle whim or the riddle has a meaning. Maybe. Four animals into four places. What does it represent? Think, Marty. Where did we see four animals holding something in their hands? Hello there. What could this be? Maybe a piece of a painting. And there's some kind of squiggle on it. The signature of the painter? Yeah, I can't make it out. It's a piece of a painting. Judging by how well it was hidden, I'm sure this is what Natasha wanted to show us. It's a piece of a painting. So a piece of a painting? That's it? And what's that smear on it? It's too illegible to be a signature. It could be anything. Well, maybe Natasha can help us. After all, this is what she wanted to show us, isn't it? Well, that's if we find her. She should be here by now. True. Well, then what's next? How about we peck around town some more? We could do that, but... I think we should gather what we know and try to figure out where we can go from here. A uh, bourbon in my office? Ah, uh, you know what? After all this, I could use a drink. Right answer. We should call the department. Anonymously, of course. Do you still remember the number? I haven't called my own workplace in years. Cretan. Of course I remember. 555-111. Five, 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 one, one, one. Is it? Since when? Since they invented the telephone. <laughs> yeah, of course. No, I knew that. I was just testing you. Yeah, right. I found a corpse. A woman. She's dead. Cold. The address is Rochester Street, 37, Flowerville. Sir, please, would you repeat that? Rochester Street, 37. Write it down and hurry up for the sake of the wild ones. Hurry! Hurry! Like a pro. Yep, like I've done it before. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. How can you forget a case like that? How many times have you seen a three-headed monkey in your life? I have a memory of a chicken, you know. That's for sure. Now let's get the hell out of here. So what are we doing here again, Sonny? I don't know. Maybe we could question Natasha. Do you think she's here? Who knows, Marty? We'll see. There's Filmar. Maybe he knows something. Yeah, maybe he's not drunk as a skunk. Stop projecting onto others, old chicken. Ah, shut the clock up, Marty. No, oh, I'm sorry I hurt your precious feelings, boss bird.
Hey, old bird. What are you waiting for out here in the rain? Is that you, boys? I'm a little uh, tired. I can see that, pal. Oh, it's all right. I just can't find my car. I don't see very well in the rain. It's my eyesight's pretty bad. I should wear glasses. <laughs> Imagine that. A hawk wearing glasses. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. There ain't nothing funny about it, Snowflake. Whoa, all right. Sorry. Have you seen uh, Natasha or Ibn since we left? Ibn? Uh, he got put off a long time ago. Natasha? I haven't seen her. Thanks anyway, pal. Uh, good luck with finding your car. You uh, want some help? Could it be that I didn't come here by car? What do you think, Sonny? Your old friend? Well, I wouldn't know that, Phil, but uh, you take care, all right? Ah, you're telling me? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Should we say hi to the old beaver? Sure. Mullen is an old, old friend, so he certainly deserves a hello. And we do need information. Few people know as much about Clawville as the old woodchomper. An encyclopedia in the flesh. Yeah, he always has something. Hey, Hercule. What's up, old friend? Hello, me lads. It's good to see you. What are you doing around here where you never see a cat, go boy? We're working, Uncle Mullen, just like you. But I'm afraid we're also walking a little bit outside the law. But it's New Year's Eve. Couldn't it wait a bit? Whatever the case is, it can't be that serious. I'm afraid it is. Maybe you can help us with a few things. After all, you know everyone in the city. <laughs> what a compliment. But of course I'll help if I can. I know you ever since you appeared in the city. Young, fresh, full of ambition. And little Marty had been just a chick when he was already coming here every day with his daddy, eh? <laughs> You're like me sons, so you are. Oh, thanks, Uncle Mullen. Eben's a ruthless gangster, that's for sure, but he's not bloodthirsty or stupid. You're not in danger until you're in his way, and that's not so easy to manage as the whole city's in his hands. How come they never tried to approach you, Uncle? What? <laughs> of course they tried. They wanted to buy the whole area and build some huge parking garage on it. Mongrel Mick, Eben's number one pug, came here and threatened me more than once. If I hadn't dug me heels in, the others would have sold up. The lawyers behind me, even Biff, the owner of Chandler's. But I told them, over my called dead carcass. Oh, looks like it worked. <laughs> I'm too much for them, lads. Or I'm just too famous around here to get rid of. We could say Ibn's almost almighty, but he avoids scandal like rats avoid fire. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, I'm a poor nobody, my lads, but my name still carries meaning. This place has always belonged to my family. If my dead body had been found here or in the times, it would have caused a scandal, even without any evidence. So, he usually listens to reason. Yeah, when I talked to him tonight, he seemed confused, dissolute, and impetuous to me. That's uncharacteristic. Are you sure it was him? Are you joking? Ibn Wessler's not usually confused with anyone else. Of course I'm joking. Beaver humor, you know? <laughs> Nobody gets it. Not even the beavers. <laughs> Good one again. Nice girl. She used to come here for a while, but I, I think she moved downtown. Yeah, she's the poster girl for workaholism. She lives in an apartment across from the PD, but sleeps at the station, if she sleeps at all. Some animals just race and race through the years of their life until someone stops them and makes them wind down. 
Is there someone like that waiting for everyone? Indeed there is, somewhere. <laughs> Usually not where we're looking for them. Yeah, right. How's Desiree? What about her? She's still beautiful, and she's still my wife. And I still don't get why she hasn't left me already. Because she's too much like you, you stubborn old damn builder. You see, you're right about that, sonny boy. And, uh, the cubs? Cubs? <laughs> More like jumbo cubs. John sees a hotshot lawyer in Galadia, and Timmy also left Clawville to try his luck in Grassmore. But who could blame them? Good move. Ah, yeah, but they visit me often, though. They're good kids. I know, pal. They're from a good letter. <laughs> if you say so, sonny. You know anything about a woman named Natasha Katsenko? Sonny boy, what have you gotten yourself into again? That lass is Ibn Wessler's protege, to put it politely. She's the crown jewel of the city. A shining new star. If you dare talk to a gal such as her, you can expect some serious lead poisoning, me boy. Well, I suppose I should have come to you first for advice. Doesn't matter now. We're in it, Uncle. Up to our combs. If you'll accept the advice of an old shaggy beaver, get to the end of it as quickly as you can, and try to make it out with all your feathers. Yeah, that's the plan. But do you know anything about her? Anything, uh, interesting? As I've heard, Natasha is quite a mysterious lass. She came from the Stavonian Sardom and fled to Clawville. But from what? No one knows. Some years of her life are shrouded in mystery. And that really means good. You're right about that. So, uh, that's your advice? Be careful. At least, sorry boy. And one more thing. What's that? Never fall in love with a woman like her. Thanks, Hercule. I wasn't planning to. Nobody plans to, Sonny. Just take care of each other, okay? And always carry a good gun in your pocket. Oh, I always have one in every pocket, old-timer. I know, Martin. I know. Phyllis and Roy's are nowhere to be seen. Praise the great wild ones. Well, let's hope this is a good omen. Maybe, finally, the pincushions have started to do something with themselves. And maybe it's not a coincidence, since we've just found a dead body, Marty. Yeah. What can I say? The night's starting to get off, huh? Just like the good old days. Well, let's just hope there won't be any more surprises tonight. You don't believe that, do you, boss? Shouting in three, two, one. And action. Mark, what the hell do you think you're doing? We're just patrolling, sir. At the station? No, we're here for something else, sir. <sighs> you missed me, huh? No, sir. I mean, yes, sir. I, I mean... Why are you grinning, Santino? I can't grin, sir. I have a beak. Oh, be cute. I can see it in your eyes. Should I close them, sir? Don't you peck at me, chicken, you hear? We're not even here anymore, Chief. We just quickly stopped by for something. Get out of my sight. Yes, sir. You're on duty. Am I right, Martin? Yes, sir. Then why the hell are you standing here? Don't you have something to do? I do, sir. Then fuck off. And you, Sonny. Don't even think about saying anything. I can already see you're dying to say something funny. I wouldn't think about it, sir. You're on duty. Am I right, Martin? Yes, sir. Then why the hell are you standing here? Don't you have something to do? I do, sir. Then fuck off. And you, Sonny. Don't even think about saying anything. I can already see you're dying to say something funny. I wouldn't think about it, sir. Shouldn't you be somewhere else, Marty? I mean, anywhere else. 
You know, I spend every New Year's Eve in here, Sonny. Ever since that New Year's Eve. It's better if I try to distract my thoughts, and work's the best way to do it. You mean fire rounds all night long? You drink, I fire. No offense. No offense taken. And you, boss? Do you still think about the bloody New Year's? Almost every day, Marty. Almost every goddamn rust-eaten day. We had no choice but to continue the investigation where it started. In that shady little apartment I called home. The only lead was the list Fillmore gave us, with all those imposing names on it. But what could it mean? And why did Natasha keep it secret from us? But most importantly, what did all this have to do with Deborah's death? The trail started to get cold, and so did the air outside. There was something unsettling in the black clouds, hiding all the stars. I prayed that they didn't bring an early snowfall. The night was already painful enough. So, what are we doing here? Trying to calm down. I'll have a shot. Sure you will. And we're trying to put the pieces together, of course. Figure out what's next. And what is next, Boss Bird? Let's take a look at what we've learned so far. So... How did this whole case start? Yeah, the threats are meant for Natasha, no doubt about that. Something Natasha didn't speak about. Natasha is terrified, and she's in real danger. But she kept this list hidden from us. It seems too important to keep it a secret. But what can we do with this list? I know only one person who moves in circles high enough to know where it's from. Lewis. We must ask him if we want to get out of this dead end. So, the card is, uh, uh, maybe a dead end. The piece of painting, too. But the list Filmar gave us... Exactly. Full of those imposing names. And I only know one person who moves in similar circles. Lamar! Yes, Marty. It's Lewis. Exactly. Of course, it's Lewis. But where do we find the bunny man? Well, since he owns this building, I'm hoping he's here. It's worth a call. You know his number? By heart. 555-932. I wrote it down in my notebook as well. Oh, you are a professional, boss bird. Hey, Lewis, uh, sorry to disturb you, again. Uh, could you come over to my place? I uh, have a question for you. It's very important. It's about a case. A real case? With the ch ch chicken police? <laughs> of course, Sonny. I I I'll be over in a few minutes. Thanks, pal. I owe you one. What? <laughs> Just a little second. Thanks, Lewis. Again. Oh, don't mention it. Besides, it was my big dream to help you with a serious case. Well, let's hope you can help. What can you tell me about this list, old pal? Hmm. Well, well, these names. 
I know half of them personally. Maybe even more. I knew it. But, but I have no idea what kind of list this is. Here we go. But these are all members of the upper cl class. Politicians, business people. Oh my. <clears throat> even the commander of the Royal Guard. Damn. But I really don't know what it means. So, is it a dead end? I'm a, a, afraid so. Deborah, the girl who came to me tonight. Yes, she's a very lovely young lady. Where did you take her after you two left? Where she asked me to. To Flowerville. Flowerville? Rochester Street 37? Yes, exactly. Why? Luck. <gasps> Did something happen? Nothing good, Lewis. Nothing good. This? This? Oh, oh, my goodness. I think we have a bingo, gentlemen. You s s see, I also have one of these. A card? Like this? Really? Y yes. It's a membership card to a very exclusive club. How exclusive? Very. That's what I'm talking about. What does SN mean, Lewis? It's the s s sweltering Nile. But that's a... Well, yes, it's a brothel. But it's not, not like that. It's s s something completely different. Calm down, Lewis. We're not going to tell anybody. Thank you so much. <laughs> it is rather embarrassing. <clears throat> Listen, Lewis. How do we get in? Phew. What to get in? Well, if you show them this card, they'll surely let you in. But it will be obvious you're not regulars there. We're used to that. So, are we going to a luxury brothel? Correct, Marty. Thanks for the help, Lewis. I owe you one. For the third time today, I think. The Marty's delight. We were heading toward the most exclusive brothel in Clawville. The separatists and those opposing the monarchy hated the place, just like they hated everything that supported interracial relations and peaceful coexistence of all species. So the place wasn't just a brothel, it was a symbol. But just like a brothel is not a worthy symbol, Clawville failed to turn out the way it was intended. Well, here we are. The kingdom of long legs, silky skin, and fluttering lashes. We've arrived. Calm down, Marty. Watch your blood pressure. That woman, she's familiar. Do you think it's her? The broad from the Bloody New Year's? God damn it, Marty, do you have to say it out loud? It gives me goosebumps. Chicken bumps more like. Anyway, I don't know if it's really her. I always get confused by the exotic ones, but... Yeah, maybe. Honestly? It gives me the creeps. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Holy fur! You swallowed so hard, the whole place shook. Are you kidding me? I've never seen anything like this before. Is this even legal? Why wouldn't it be? I don't know. Vice? You really must be joking. Vice in Clawville? Uh, okay, okay, I was pulling your leg. But still, it's a little hot in here. Now oh, cool down, Marty. Don't even look over there. Remember Laura, your wonderful girlfriend, whom you love more than anything. You don't need to tell me. All I'm thinking about is her. With a hatchet in her hand. More like my nuggets. <laughs> At... <laughs> uh. 
Laura, 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 Laura. That's it, Marty. Just slowly turn away from the pictures. Laura, 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 Laura. That's it, Marty. Just slowly turn away from the pictures. I... I don't even know... Good gods! Hey, keep it down, Marty. I see it now. Of all that's furry. Yes, it's very furry. Or more like, uh, shaggy. Excuse me, gentlemen. Would you be so kind as to help me? With pleasure, ma'am. The zipper always comes down on my dress. Would you kindly zip it back up? Can I, Sonny? What am I, your mother? Do what you want, for God's sake. Happy to help, ma'am. Oh, what a gallant young man. Pluckin' lords. I'm sorry. Can I try again? If you'd really like to. Please be more careful this time. I will be, ma'am. Oh, thank you, honey. Marty, ma'am. Marty McChicken. Thank you, darling Marty. I'm much obliged. Anytime, ma'am. Anytime. My name is Day Night Diamond. Welcome to the Sweltering Nile, gentlemen. Miss Diamond, I'm Sonny, and this is my partner, Marty. If I may, miss, you have a beautiful name and exceptionally wonderful stripes. Marty, not now. Oh, thank you very much. Please excuse him. He doesn't visit places like this very often. Uh, me neither, uh, to be honest. Oh, nothing to worry about, gentlemen. There's a first time for everyone. You're absolutely right. We're just interested in a certain lady called Deborah. Deborah? We don't have any employees by that name right now, but if you want, any of our girls would love to be Deborah for a night. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, excuse me, you misunderstand. Uh, she doesn't work here. I'm afraid I don't follow. It's kind of confusing, but let me try to explain. Please, I'm at your service. I'll gladly answer any of your questions. You hear that, Sonny? Any questions? Shut up, Marty. If you have a specific question, please, go ahead, officers. Oh, you've noticed we're cops. <laughs> please don't take this the wrong way, but it was evident the moment you turned up. Should we take that as a compliment? If you'd like. I wouldn't want to offend you, far from it, but it's evident you're from the police, even without this. Is it that obvious? No, it isn't, but, you know, here in the Nile, we have a keen eye for this kind of thing. Right. I understand, ma'am. Do you know a gentleman named Louis C. Hayworth? Of course I do. Mr. Hayworth is a regular guest at our establishment. I see. Uh, how regular, if I may ask? I can't give you any information about that. House policy. We have that, too. It's called the law, ma'am. Mm. If you have any questions of that nature, please come back with a warrant. Ah, touché. Does this list mean anything to you? This? I'm not sure. No, nothing. 
Don't you see some familiar names on there? I do, but everybody knows those animals. Personally, I have no contact with any of them. I see. Oh, thank you. Look, she gave this to us. The girl named Deborah, the one we uh, asked you about. I see. Do you know what this is? Of course. It's a membership card. Was this person a regular here? If this belonged to her, then yes. I can check for you. Please, the ladies will entertain you while you wait. I'll be right back. Uh, thank you. I'm much obliged. I apologize for the wait. Please, come with me, gentlemen. So you were successful. My mistress, Madame Zavas, would like to meet you. You mean that, Madame Zavas? As far as I know, there's only one of her, so... yes. Please, miss, take us to her. With pleasure. Madame Zavas was a legend in Clawville. Her name was known all over the wilderness. She's an avid royalist. Former member of the Council of Twelve, spy master, assassin, businesswoman, and courtesan. To be honest, I didn't even know she was still alive. She's no spring chicken, that's for sure. She could also be my mother, or maybe my grandmother. First Ibn Wessler, now her. Honestly, tonight it wouldn't surprise me if His Majesty Hector III didn't grace me with his presence. Interesting pieces. Do you think so? It's the art of my people. Uh, crocodiles? There are many kinds of crocodile in the wilderness, Mr. Featherland. This is the art of the Nylonites. Ah, hence the name, the Sweltering Nile. It's a river, Mr. Featherland. My ancestors lived by this river a long time ago. Ah. Interesting. Thank you. What a painting. Congratulations, ma'am. Marty. Yes. It's beautiful indeed. It's more than 40 years old. You know, I was considered pretty then. Oh, don't say that. You still look great, ma'am. Thank you. It feels good, but no. There's no need for lies. Those days are long gone. Every age has its truth and its beauty. For me, beauty is not in the looks anymore. I agree, ma'am. Let me introduce myself properly, ma'am. Mr. Zadino, I know who you are. And I also know your partner. The legend of the chicken police is always one step ahead of the chicken police. Uh, thank you. That's flattering. Hmm. May I ask what you are looking for exactly? Here, on this night? You know, that's an interesting question. The card we've shown your lovely colleague... ...belongs to an old friend of ours, whom we haven't seen for a long time here. And the name? Unfortunately, no, Mr. Santino. That's confidential information. In my line of work, discretion is everything. Well, you know, in our line of work, the law is above everything. Oh, do you think so? I could tell you what your colleagues think is also above everything, but, as I said, discretion. Look, ma'am, we don't want to impose. We're conducting a private investigation, which started off as harmless, but now it's murder. That sounds serious. It is serious. That's why we'd be grateful for your help. In that case, I'm at your service. Ask your questions, and I'm going to answer to the best of my knowledge. 
As long as you're not wading through muddy waters. Fortunately, I swim very well for a chicken. I swim well, too. As I was saying, it belongs to us. Only our most valuable guests have one of these. And our employees, of course. The employees, too. Good to know. Can you tell me if this card belonged to a guest or an employee? No. I thought so. Yes, thank you. Do you know Natasha Katsenko personally? Yes, I do. Tell me about her. Warm-hearted, protective, quick-tempered, fierce. Yes, fierce. Thank you. Very useful. Deceit is everything to Zavos. She used to be a spy, so I'm gonna take her every word with a grain of salt. Who's behind the legend, Miss Zavos? Who are you, really? Just an animal raised to survive, Mr. Featherland. And because I've been taught, I know how to survive. I always was what I had to be. And you managed to dodge my question. Clever. Well, you see, this is one of the typical elements of survival. The way of dodging a delicate question and still making the questioner believe he got the answer. <laughs> but you're too cunning and experienced, aren't you? <laughs> you're not an easy one to fool. I'm trying to maintain appearances, ma'am. You should. Appearances, most of the time, are stronger and more dangerous than the truth. Tell me, were you really the king's spy? If that's such an open secret, then I haven't been doing my job very well, isn't that right? <laughs> yes, I was a spy. But that's such a blunt way of putting it. I always say I used to undertake confidential, generally political assignments of a delicate nature for the king that were in the interests of national security. But that way, it sounds rather romantic. Don't believe the cheap fiction, Mr. Featherland. Espionage is anything but romantic. I believe you, madam. If you must know, I only did it because I believed I could protect those that I serve. Weapons have only one use in this world. To keep the peace. Yes. I always thought about myself and my craft that way. Thank you for your honesty, ma'am. Why did you decide to open a brothel? You know, this place used to be an orphanage. Then after the great avian plague, a hatchery. Then, young mothers lived here who had nowhere else to go. That's when I took over. Young mothers and prostitutes. That feels like a sharp turn. No, it didn't happen like that, of course. The process took 20 years, but one thing remains the same. I wanted to help girls who had nothing and no one. To help them. And this was the best you could do, helping them sell their bodies. You see things very superficially, Mr. Featherland. We're a family who helped each other even at the worst of times, took care of each other, and what's most important, survived. Yes, survive, no matter the cost. And it's the cherry on top of the most treasured secrets of the rich and famous. Very insightful, Mr. Featherland. There's truth to that. Knowledge is power, as they say. And we know a lot about powerful animals that could be used as weapons. Or the opposite. <laughs> that could avert a war. If I guess who the card belongs to, will you tell me? I wouldn't say that's an acceptable price for such a secret as this, but... If you guess right, I won't lie to you. Then, I will tell you you were right. 
Yes. Good. Let's see. The answer to my question, Natasha Katsenko. Well, Mr. Featherland, it seems the gossip about you is right. What gave it away? It couldn't have been easier. There's a beautiful woman with a mysterious past, trying to keep it a secret, while someone's threatening her with the exact same thing, leaving rather unmistakable messages behind. Plus, we found the card on Deborah, who was her best friend and confidant, so she was either trying to hide it or destroy it forever, so no one could find out the truth. Am I right so far? Indeed, Mr. Featherland. So if I'm not mistaken, Natasha used to work for you before she met Ibn Wessler. He fell in love with her, gave her a job at the Millions Club. The rest is history. You have talent, Mr. Featherland. I'm really sorry you're not working for the government. I am working for the government. I'm a cop. Are you sure, Mr. Featherland? Touché. Indeed. Natasha used to work here. We can put it that way, but you know, this isn't just a workplace. She also lived here. She was part of our family. And we still love her very much. Right. That puts everything in a different light. Savas is a true survivor, always was. And she's proud of that, even to this day. Maybe I can get her to trust me if I play to this part of her. Why did you take her in? Maybe you saw yourself in Natasha. She was only 17 when she knocked on the rear entrance of the brothel on an unusually cold, rainy night. I opened the door myself. Was Natasha alone? Yes, completely alone. Her left arm was slashed with an ugly wound and she was frozen to the bone, barefoot, only a thin nightgown on her. Did she tell you what happened to her? After I brought her into the house, warmed her up, and changed her into new clothes, that was the first thing I asked. But no, she didn't tell me. We became very good friends. But I still don't know what happened to her and where she came from. Or how she knew about this place and the rear entrance. And you weren't bothered by all those secrets? That would have been very hypocritical of me, don't you think? No, it didn't bother me. I make a living out of secrets, Mr. Featherland. I see. Do you know where Natasha came from before Clawville? Naturally. The poor dear couldn't even deny it. Even her name's eloquent, her accent, but mostly her manners, Mr. Featherland. She's from Stovos, and she belonged to the upper class of Stavonian social circles. She could barely even speak the language when I first met her. That's all you know about her. An ex-spy like you must have checked up on her new protege's past. That's the most exciting thing. Yes, I have. Multiple times putting my most treasured connections to good use. But nobody found anything. Natasha's trail could only be traced back to this Dovonian border. What happened in that country, no one knows. It's rather curious, don't you think? It is, Mr. Featherland. Yes, curious. That's why I've always been rather fond of Natasha. Did it touch you deeply when she left you? Indeed, <laughs> it did. Zavos is protective. It seems she's dedicating her whole life to her protégés. If I concentrate on that, maybe she'll open up to me. Have you kept in touch? Only occasionally, Mr. Featherland. She writes to me every few weeks, and very rarely we talk on the phone. But I haven't heard from her in weeks. The truth is I've started to worry about her. Did she give no sign of being in trouble? Never. No. Natasha's not the kind to talk about her feelings. Yeah, I've noticed that myself.
When was the last time you saw her, Madame Zavas? Maybe around two months ago. There was a ball attended by Ibn Wessler, his beautiful mate Natasha, and myself. Yes. Was she herself? Did you feel like she was afraid or worried about something? On the contrary, she was unrestrained, free, radiant. She was in love. Yes, in her own unique way. What do you mean? You know Natasha loves on a different level than most Clawville women. Or most women in the wilderness, in fact. Maybe it's because of the Stovonian origins. Perhaps it's something else. So you didn't notice anything strange about her? Well, if anything could be called strange, it was that I saw a woman positively floating above the ground, who previously used to stand on it with two feet. I see. Thank you, madam. How did you feel when you learned Natasha was going to leave? Honestly, I was very hurt. I loved her as a daughter. How would you have felt? I couldn't say. And I still couldn't stop her, and you know why? Of course I do, because you loved her. You've been in my shoes before, am I right, Detective? Yes, I can feel you have. This isn't about me, madam. Please stop changing the subject. I have felt betrayed on a certain level. Yes, and offended, and alone. Even amongst all my friends. Were you disappointed in her? Only in myself, Mr. Featherland. But I have a hunch you know this feeling very well. Yes, you're right. Well, thank you for your time, madam. Any time, detective. Yes, any time. Please, gentlemen, wait here a moment. I would like to show you something that could help you. Oh, that's excellent news. Thank you. We will wait. Do you trust her? Not in the slightest. Even her smile is fake. This woman wallowed in other animals' secrets until she became one, too. That's exactly how I feel. Anyway, now that we're here, we can take a better look around. Just what I was thinking. Hidden door. Who'd have thought? She is a legendary ex-spy. Well, this is something I've never understood. Why isn't a key good enough? I mean, you can take that with you, but riddles can be solved by anyone. I don't think many animals get to be in this room, Marty. And the other thing is, maybe she wanted us to find it. Exactly what I'm thinking. Who knows? Anyway, we're going in. This room is not like her at all. The other must have been for show. Marty, this is the reality. We're talking about a professional spy. A former spy. Still, if anyone knows how to mask her real face, it's her. But you think this is who she really is? Cold, dark, and tiny. And full of secrets.
So the rumors are true. Military intelligence. This dame's really something. I'm starting to think the whole brothel is just a cover. Ah, uh, makes sense. You think she's still working for Royal Intelligence? Well, based on what she told us, she's a committed Royalist. So I imagine she does. Hector III, our great and fair king. I feel sorry for the poor fox, to be honest. I don't. He has it pretty good. Would you like to live your life as a puppet? Everything you do, carefully planned. Your rule and authority, the whole thing, just for show. Even if he is just a puppet, Clawville needs a king. He gives strength and hope to many animals. <laughs> I guess. This has got to be it, Marty. Look at the missing page. Oh, gods. And look at the names. Yeah, the ladies and their guests. Damn. What this means, Marty, is that the most influential people in the city had been Natasha's patrons. Some even from the royal family. This book could destabilize Clawville. At least the Clawville we currently know. You think this is behind everything? Somebody's blackmailing Natasha because of this? That could easily be the case. But something still doesn't fit. That piece of a painting. Sonny? If there's even a small chance of... Sonny. What? There's another familiar name here. What are you talking about? Fucking hell, Sonny. Molly? She was working here too. Uh, it's probably someone else with the same name. So that's why Natasha told me they'd known each other for a long time. Look, boss. I can't believe it. All those stories about her past. Listen, boss bird. Molly loved you, right? Isn't that what matters? Marty, please shut your fucking beak right now, or I'll shut it for you. Okay, boss. I'm sorry, but... Just shut the cluck up. We've caught them sneaking around, Miss Diamond, you see? I see, madam. No, oh, back off, ladies. There's no need for this. We don't want trouble. No, maybe you don't. Unfortunately, trouble has found you, gentlemen. Madam Zavos, we needed to know the connection. What this place has to do with Natasha. And... And? And my wife. Filthy cops? He's talking gibberish. May I shoot him? No, not yet, Miss Diamond. I'd be very sorry to put holes in your lovely striped skin, but believe me, baby, I will. I've always wanted to know if diamonds are bulletproof. Please, madam? It'll all be over in a second. No. We have received different orders, Miss Diamond. Stand down. Oh, I see. The pony does tricks on command. Well, I'm not surprised. That's enough, Marty. You knew who she was, didn't you? What she meant to me. Well, well, Mr. Featherland. Aren't you interested in your case anymore? No? All it took was a name from your past, and your professionalism drowned in the mud. Stop playing games with me, Zavos. What does all this have to do with Molly? Nothing at all. No, she was just a little bird among the many who sought refuge here. You forced her into this! You'd love to hear that, but until she met you, she was one of us. Just another... You clucking... Sonny, no! I think I was dreaming. But it wasn't the kind of dream you'd want to remember. Dark and painful. 
Then the suffocating smoke woke me. It wasn't fried eggs, that's for sure. Where was I? What happened? That treacherous crocodile. Then I saw Marty, who looked as horrible as I felt. Well, I've always wanted a romantic sea voyage. God damn it. I knew I shouldn't have gone along with this. Marty, I told you you could get out any time. <laughs> and you knew damn well that I wouldn't. That I would never leave you in deep shit once I've joined you. You knew it, and you still asked me to do it. Marty, listen. You're a selfish bastard, Sonny. And you drag everyone around you down with you. How long was it till retirement? 120 days? 121. But you just couldn't sit still on your ass, could you? Well, take a good look around, boss bird. This is you. And this is what follows you. Just this clucking misery. And dead bodies. Do you understand? You have nothing else to offer but suffering. Marty. And feeling sorry for yourself. Oh, you're great at that. I can't believe this shit. We're gonna die here on a god's damn blazing ship like roast chicken. Well, it's dramatic at least, just like you like it. Marty. What? I've almost managed to untie the knot. But if you keep thrashing around like that, we're really gonna die here. Ah, oh, for cluck's sake. Fine. Work your magic. Until then, I'm gonna say all the prayers I know. You better. So what now? Now we run and swim. I can't swim. Well, you better learn fast or you'll die. I'm not gonna drag your fat ass to the shore if that's what you're hoping. Well, I shouldn't have brought this many guns with me. Throw them away then. Never. Then they'll drag you down into the deep. Ah, I don't care. I always thought your gun mania would be your undoing. Cluck you, Sonny. We have to survive this first. Well. After you, boss bird. <laughs> that furry fucking clucking gods, damn. Yeah. Listen, Marty. What? What you said on the ship. What? What about it? You were right. I knew this would happen. Or something like it. I dragged you into this deliberately, because I'm not enough on my own. Sonny, cut the crap. No, I'm serious. I knew I couldn't do this alone. I needed you to, well, to look out for me. I don't need this, all right? Stop playing the wounded soul. I don't fucking care. Fair enough. <laughs> You're right. Hell yeah, I'm fucking right. I'll, uh... 
shut up now. Good. I think I must have hit my head pretty badly. Say, isn't that Captain Marsh? You see him too? Oh, thank the gods. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, lads. What the hairy devil are you doing out here? Isn't it a bit cold for a swim? It was warm on the ship, at least while it was burning. I bet it was. Arr. Hey, Captain, how's it hanging? It's hanging all right. Arr. What about you, lubbers? What was all that ruckus, eh? Oh, I think someone tried to kill us, Captain. Again. Come on, Boise. There's nothing new there. Yeah, old rust can't be scraped away. Did you see anything, Captain? Arr, of course I have. A burning ship. Then two cocks suddenly learn to fly. And even swim, by God. Oh, what a time to be alive, eh? <laughs> you haven't changed a bit, old man. Sure I haven't. I'm steady. Like the Sea of Clawville. Yeah, except that Clawville doesn't have a sea. Of course it does, laddie. Just not here in Clawville. Okay, okay. That's too much for me. But seriously, have you seen anything? Arr, of course I have. I'm always watching, my lad. Just ask me, what do you want to know? Tell me, Captain, do you hang out here all the time? This behind me is me ship, lads. Or at least, it's a ship I'm living in at the moment. It's not mine, you know. And what do you do? I stand here and watch the sea. The sea? You mean the River of Times? River? <laughs> Arr, that was a good one, boy. Okay. Black car stopped not far from here. A rich looking car, shiny and all. Yeah, what else? Two big lads stepped out of it. One of them was looking like some kind of cow. The other was a cat, a big cat. They were fancy looking at the ship. I don't blame them. It's not something you see every day. I swear on all the saints of the sea. Arr. Just a wild guess. Was it a ram and a bobcat? Arr, exactly. Are you friends of theirs? Well, an acquaintance. It's the bouncer of the Tsar Club and the goon that was hanging around Ibn. Plumy gods. Save ass answers to Ibn too. Or at least they're connected. Yeah. Oh, arr. That sounds exciting. He's the old timer. This uh, Ram fella, what did he do after watching us? Arr, nothing at all, laddie. When that lovely ship started to sink, they got into their pretty car and got away like bats out of hell. So they didn't see us swimming to shore? Arr, I wouldn't know that. Uh, what now? I don't know. We can't go to the station, that's for sure. We agree on that. I think I broke a rib. Or two. My sight's getting blurry. Pluck me. You know what this means? Oh, no, no. I'd rather go blind than go to Bubo's. We have to, pal. I'm not your pal. Especially after tonight. Come on. We've got no choice. <sighs> well, we survived the burning ship. I guess we'll survive the madman, too. Don't be so optimistic. Bubo used to work at the PD as a coroner and pathologist. Then a couple of limbs and organs went missing, 
and the morphine stock suspiciously depleted, so the force said goodbye to him. He then set up a private practice, but lost his license pretty quick. Now he's doing something that vaguely resembles medicine. Fixing up gangsters and bent coppers. Or pigeons like us. I hadn't seen the doc since he had to pick a dozen pellets out of my drumstick. Thanks, Marty. Well, well. Look who the cat dragged in. The one and only chicken coppers in the rotting flesh. Good evening to you too, old owl. Aw, has he shot you again? Not yet. Ha ha, it is to laugh. I just need a strong painkiller. And since we're already here, some information too. Well, then I hope your pockets are full. We just crawled out of the river, so if it's all right with you, I can pay with a pocket full of mud. Well, I owe you one anyway. One? Don't make me laugh, Bubo. You're indebted to us for the rest of your life. Okay, okay, tell me what's wrong and do it fast. It's a busy night. On New Year's Eve, animals love to shoot or even eat each other. Ah, tell me about it. Tonight's starting to remind me of the bloody New Year's Eve. Or worse. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Did you come here to cry me a river? Spit it out. Then get your wobbly waddles out of here. Ursula will be home soon. Charming as ever, old bird. Spit it out. What do you want from me? I have a busy night. Busy? I had to patch up two muscle heads a few minutes ago. Of course, they ran off and didn't pay. What muscle heads? Wait, let me guess. A ram and a bobcat. How did you know? Shit. What was that problem? Why did they come here? Bobcat's hand was badly burned and something had sliced the ram. Well, it's not an easy job to haul two unconscious roosters onto an abandoned ship and then set it on fire. What have you gotten yourselves into again, you fools? Those two work for Ibn Wessler. Yeah, don't say. Well, in this case, it was nice to know you gentlemen. Don't celebrate in advance, Doc. As you can see, we're not so easy to kill. Just tell us everything you know, and give us some strong painkillers. Well, all right. Ask away. But I must warn you, if Ursula comes home and sees you here, she'll either kick you out or maul you to death. Joking aside, how are you, Doc? Long time no see. Oh, you should get shot more often than you'd see me more. Yeah, right. I'm on it. I'm still alive. Clawville's still standing, to my surprise. Ursula still bears with me, to my even greater surprise. What else can I say? You don't need anything else then, right? You know... I could use a big house, a normal job, and a ton of money. And it'd be great if that ridiculous King Hector would finally resign from the throne. So you still support the Separatists? Wow, this old owl's heart is beating. But your life partner is a bear. Mm, not a problem, as long as I don't marry her. You're a goddamn hypocrite, Bubo. Why, thank you. What does this tell you, Bubo? That you tore off the corner of a painting? Not that. What do you make of it? That somewhere a painting is missing a corner. Don't cluck with me, old man. I'm not. I'm completely serious. Then, thanks for the help. <sighs> Don't mention it. Love is still in the air, I see. I'm a prisoner, boys. <laughs> yeah, the prisoner of your stupidity. Easy for you to say. 
You can't get rid of a woman like her so easily. Why? Because she's a bear and weighs a ton? No. Because no matter how much I hate her, I still love her more than anything. Aw, touching. Hold your tongue, McChicken. What do you know about Madame Zavas and her affairs? Zavas, huh? Who? That woman's probably even more dangerous than Ibn Wessler himself. Oh, great news. Is there some kind of link between them? Ibn's contacts span the entire city, and his new girlfriend, that Natasha, worked in the brothel once. How do you know that? Everybody knows. Oh, great. We almost died for that information. Why didn't you ask? Just shut up, okay? So that Ram and his partner, did they talk about something? About their plans, where they're going next? The Bobcat didn't say a word, he just growled. But the Ram couldn't shut up, and he talks like a butler or something. He's got a very strange vocabulary, I must say. What did they say, Bubo? Get to the point. After they've done the job killing you, I guess, they said they have to kill a rat, too. A rat? Figuratively. An informer. Someone who spilled the beans and hurt Mr. Wessler's interests. An informer? They called him a sneaky little bastard, too, if that helps. That's gotta be Zip. Of course. Zip. Damn it. Well, then, that flea bag's done for. Hold your horses, Marty. Zip is like a cockroach. Practically immortal. I guess. We gotta help him, then. I'm afraid you're right. We still owe him one. One? I didn't even hear that, Bubo. So, who tried to get us out of the way, and why? Ibn Wessler. But why? Just because Natasha used to work at that place? wants to hide the tracks leading to Natasha's past. Or maybe it was Natasha herself. But what does it have to do with Zip? Why do they want to kill the raccoon? Zip knows something or has something that can unveil Natasha and Ibn's secret. We need to find out what it is. Sonny, there's something else. Your car is here behind the building. Ursula covered it with a tarp. What? Why? She saw it in front of the brothel. And she also saw the madam's girls trying to take it apart. Furry gods. What did she do to them? Well... A couple of dames with guns are not enough to scare my dear Ursula, that's for sure. But relax. She didn't tear them to pieces. She just chased them off and got away with your car. You know, for once, that's wonderful news. Yeah, I wore my legs down to get here. Warmest regards to Ursula when she gets back, Doc. She may have saved our lives. <sighs> of course I will. Now, cluck off, will you? Ah, you're the best, Bubo. I know. Will you kindly get lost? Well, looks like the party's over.
Yeah, it looks like it. And just when I was starting to get into the mood. Damn it. I thought I was gonna see you shake a tail feather tonight, boss. Yeah, let's not go that far. I could already smell you, boys. Ah, hello, Morty. What's up? Are you lost, old lizard? Me? <laughs> lost? <laughs> no way. If I'm not mistaken, your rickety little shack isn't this way, Morty. It's uh, miles away from here. Don't you worry about me, you overgrown eggs. I know where the road's taking me. Jeffy uh, threw you out again, huh? Don't you worry about that either, pal. <laughs> that little bastard. All right, listen, Mort. I'll talk to Lewis for you, okay? Luckily, he's right here. Don't bother because of me, sonny boy. He's nothing. I can walk. No worries. I just want your legend to live on, lizard wizard. Hey, Lewis. Here again? I just left something here, S -S Sonny, but nothing important. Are you sure everything's all right, Lewis? You seem, uh, distracted. I'm fine, S -S Sonny. Don't you worry about me. What are you doing here anyway? You look quite b b battered Now well, we got both hot and cold tonight, literally and at the same time. But we're alive, and we're hoping maybe we can find Natasha here. I'm s s sorry, Sonny. I haven't seen her since her performance. Well, thanks. Uh, keep your eyes open, all right? In my e ears. Thanks, boys. But you really don't have to. Not one more word, Mort. Listen, uh, Lewis, uh, I need uh, some help. Uh, a favor. Sonny, you know, for you, anything, my friend. Five times a day, even. Okay, okay, I deserve that. So, how can I ha ha assist you again? You know old Morty, right? Uh, 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 yes, I, I know him. <clears throat> Indeed. I know he's not a saint, and he doesn't smell like flowers. His manners are disgraceful. And he drinks a lot. He's friends with weirdos. And he's in and out of jail. So, he need, needs a room, right? You guessed it, pal. Well, no problem, t -t -t gentlemen. I can handle that. Thanks, Lewis. Again. I don't know how many times. Much obliged. Don't mention it. One day I'm gonna a a ask you for a favor in return. Anything, Long Ears. Ah, we're busted, boss. Yeah, the boys were quite fast, I admit. Ah, what are we gonna tell them? Any chance we were just joyriding around here? Not much. That's why they're gonna believe it. Do you think so? Just watch and learn, cub. Sonny, you sure they'll welcome us here? No, they won't, but I don't care. I like this new Sonny. Damn, we're late. I don't see him anywhere. But that jerk's here. Yeah, the famous scribbler Tim in the flesh. He must have seen something. And because he's here, he must have caught a whiff of a serious case. We should interrogate him. Oh, let me be the bad cop, boss bird. Permission granted. Yes. Hey, Timbo, my old pal. Hey, 
Uh, hello, boys. W what a lovely welcome. You're not scared to see us, are you? Who? Me? <laughs> what are you thinking? I I'm always glad to see you working. Especially together like this is the legendary chicken police. What the hell's going on here, Jim? That's exactly what I was thinking. You see, what the hell could have happened here, right? Very strange, indeed. Where's Zip, Timbo? Let me guess. A ram and a bobcat appeared and took him with them. Well, uh, you could say that if it happened, but it didn't. Then what? <laughs> Isn't it great? Here's the twist. Start talking, Tim, or we'll have to see if you can really fly. Come on, Sonny, I was supposed to be the bad cop. Shut your beak, Monty. Hey, hey, quit playing tough, will ya? You know I'll help you even if you don't threaten me. I always do. Mostly. Stop babbling, just answer the question. What do you know about Madame Zavos, Timothy? What's the old hag up to these days? I only know what everybody does. She's rich, she owns a brothel, allegedly she used to be a spy, and she's an enthusiastic supporter of the Crown and the Royalist Party. What else? Well, I haven't heard anything else, I swear. She's surrounded by secrets. She was a spy, you know. Although... Yes? A little bird told me she's been entertaining quite a lot of foreign guests recently. I mean, real high-quality VIP guests. Who? From where? Well, I don't know, but allegedly, she's welcomed patrons from Stavonia, Averia, and even Nautica. Basically from everywhere that matters. And? Well, that's all. You know I can get into everywhere, but even I give the Nile a wide berth. Those wild girls are capable of anything protecting the madam. Trust me. Yeah, we've noticed. So, what about Zip? I'm telling you, I don't know. He was already gone by the time I got here. Why are you still sniffing around? Uh, I was uh, trying to make that fella talk over there. What, the old fly guy? You speak, insect? What if I do? I'm educated, you know. Ah, right, Tim. My patience is gone. It's time you start singing like the songbird you are. Hey, that seabird. Okay, okay, back off. We're old friends, aren't we? Exactly. That's why I haven't smeared the walls with you yet. Ouch! Timbo's a douchebag, so it's not hard to draw the truth from him. So what the hell are you doing around here, Timbo? Uh, all right, I confess, but you'll be surprised. I was looking for you, boys. The whole town's talking about you. Really? I'm swelling with pride. Everybody's whispering about the chicken police being back together again. And that you've already turned the whole city upside down. Great news. What else do they say? that you've threatened Ibn Wessler's sweetheart, Natasha, then trashed Madame Zabas's brothel. Hard stuff. Really? I'm not surprised. Oh, and the best! You set fire to a ship, too. Yeah, right. Ah, and one more thing. A poor girl was found dead at Natasha's place after you visited there. Is that so? And you believe all that? Uh, I'm a journalist, Sonny. It doesn't matter what I believe. Yeah. Right. And why were you looking for us here, of all places? You offend me, Sonny. I'm your biggest fan. I knew the hop dog's gonna be on your list. So it was a lucky guess. Uh, something like that. And I'm wasting time here often anyway, so I had nothing to lose. And here we are. Out with it, Tim. Who squawked? Well, any decent journalist has connections everywhere, Sonny. So have I. So? You don't think I'm gonna betray my source? What do you take me for, a rat? Sorry, I mean, I didn't mean it like that. I, I have no problem with rats. What happened to Zip, Tim? Okay. When I arrived here, the hop dog was already closed. 
Zip wanted to shoo me away, but I managed to persuade him to talk to me a little. Uh, we're old friends, Sonny, you know? And uh, I have this personal charm. Yeah, right, the uh, charm. Get to the point, Timbo. Uh, okay, okay. So, he was totally crazy. I've never seen him like that before. He was flustered, flailing, and talking absolute gibberish. He must have said something, since you're such great friends. He just said he'd go to the only place where there are even bigger scoundrels than those that are after him. Really? I can guess where he meant. I didn't have a clue. Anyway, after he closed the dog behind me, and then the cops came and took him away in handcuffs, I came to the conclusion that all of this makes no sense. Zip, you clever son of a bitch. Why? Ooh, what is it? Oh, tell me. You just keep your beak out of this, Scribbler. I think I've got an idea about what our little friend's up to. Timbo loves to brag, and it's easy to approach him through his ego. Best if we ruthlessly exploit that. Heard any juicy gossip today, Tim, my friend? Natasha performed your new song tonight. It was a blast, I heard. And a poor little Bambi died. Oh, and a ship was seen burning and sinking on the times, but you already know that. Not only know it, we even felt it. That all? But it could fill a full issue of the Clawville Chronicle. Isn't that enough? It's more than enough, Tim, old pal. As you're so well-informed, Timster, tell me about Madame Zavos. Well, they say she's kinda angry because someone trashed her brothel. Oh, and that someone was allegedly you and Marty. Yeah, you already told us. Good story. Anything else? with a little more truth in it. Allegedly, Ibn Wessler's men were seen around the brothel. I have a hunch that they were the same two guys that came here, too. Gee, that may even be true. Timbo, you pay attention to everything. Did anyone else come here? Besides the coppers? Yeah, a ram and a bobcat, in fact. But you just told us it wasn't them. W wasn't them what? I didn't say they took Zip, because that's not how it happened. Don't make me mad, Tim. We're really not in the mood for this. Hey, I I'm only telling you the truth. They stopped here in a fancy big car, uh, looked around, then left. Zip was no longer here. Neither were the coppers, okay? Tiny Tim is a true fan of ours, and it's time to finally use that to our advantage. Help your old pals, Tim. What was Zip doing before they took him away? Hey, you're trying to grease me up with all that sweet talk, Sonny Honey. Of course not, Tim Tim. We're old pals. I'm sure we are, but I don't remember you telling me that without an ulterior motive. But you know what? I don't care. Feels good anyway. I'm glad to hear that. So... Zip was acting crazy. He was running around, knocking over everything, and throwing things away. Then he suddenly disappeared into the kitchen. I guess that's when he made the call. Because soon after that, the coppers arrived. And in between? Well, I didn't see him in between. Why didn't you go inside? He's your friend, isn't he? Well, I tried, Sonny. The door was closed. I, I knocked, even yelled. You know how a yelling seagull sounds like, <laughs> but nothing. I think I have a hunch what that was all about. Good for you, Sonny. Zip was hiding something in the dog, right? Uh, what do you mean exactly? Well, you tell me. You're good old friends, aren't you? Well, that's right, Sonny, but Zip's not the kind to easily share his secrets. But now that you put it that way... That's more like it, Tim. Tell me, what do you know? Oh, I don't know what it could be exactly. I mean, maybe it's not even relevant, but I'm sure Zip was trying to get rid of something when I arrived here. What and where? 
I don't know, okay? I, I already told you too much. If Zip hears about me telling you all this, he's never gonna talk to me again. Tim, unless we find Zip, he's not gonna talk to anyone ever again. Not in this life, at least. Look at this mess. Looks like he was in a real hurry, or was trying to erase his tracks. Because he was trying to hide something. But where? And most of all, what? Let's take a good look around. Look at this. I'm looking, but what the hell could it be? No idea, Marty. Guess it's best if we ask the owner himself. Where do we find him? Well, Timbo told us he's with even worse bastards than the one chasing him. That's it? The Parliament? No, Marty, but close. Then... no way. Oh, yes, Marty. Zip is at the Clawville City Police Department. Could it be that simple? And that wild? Well, the cops took him. So it's obvious that he called the cops by himself to scare away Westler's henchmen. Timbo was right. Doesn't he know half the police is in Westler's pocket? He probably does, but this was his only chance. Uh, then he really is in big trouble. So? To the PD then? Well, yeah, I haven't got a better idea. Believe me, I'd love to have one. Have you found what you were looking for? No, Timbo, but we wouldn't tell you even if we did. Ah, but you have. You are an open book to me, Sonny. So, uh, thanks for the intel. Be careful what you're writing, Timmy boy. I'm a cop for only the next 121 days. After that, I can gut you if I want, and get away with it. And when did you being a cop stop you? He yeah, has a point. Just keep a low profile, okay, Timster? Okay, okay, I get it. My beak is sealed. Zoop. Look at what the wind of the sea dragged in. Our gull friend in the flesh. I can't believe it. Is this guy everywhere? The gull sees farthest who flies highest, Marty. Yeah. That guy's never given up, that's clucking sure. Clucking furry hell! So they know we're still alive? And they'd like to do something about it. We could only hope we'd arrived in time. If they'd taken Zip to the interrogation room, the hole as we called it, and beaten the truth out of him, we'd lose the trail and end up in a dead end. It was time to be fast and ruthless. God damn it, Zip. Why couldn't you stay out of this? Ah, look who's here. The top of the cops. Idiot's luck. They must have gotten soaking wet because of those holes. Sometimes I wonder how these two are even still alive in a city like this. Wonders of the world, Marty. Martin! Yes, Chief? You know what I've heard? I have no idea, Chief. You think I'm stupid, birds? 
No, no, we, uh, we don't, Chief. What the ever-loving fuck do you think you're doing? Uh, Chief, I if I may... Sonny, shut the fuck up! You're not on duty. You're suspended, if you remember. So I'm not your chief right now. Oh, we just stepped out for a coffee, Chief. Then we saw something suspicious at the Czar Club, and we investigated it, and, um... Suspicious, right? You investigated, right? Yes, sir. Do you take me for a fool, chickens? And what do you know about the burning ship that lit up the entire time? Burning, uh, what? <laughs> Wild Lords, that, that sounds awful. Don't play innocent with me, Santino. You both stink like you're in deep, deep shit. Well, you don't think we had anything to do with that, do you? I don't know. But if you do, I will find out. You better know that. I swear, Chief. <laughs> I've had enough of your swearing for a lifetime. Get the fuck out of my sight. Yes, sir. Have a beautiful day, Chief. Don't let me see you again, Santino. Or... I'll try not to be seen, Chief. I'm not your Chief. Get lost. The Hound of Hell in the Flesh. I don't think any kind of devil would be brave enough to get a dog like this son of a bitch. <clears throat> a busy day, sir. Sonny, you think I'm just joking, right? Speak to me one more time, and I'll fire your ass. Uh, understood, sir. Sorry. I hope this doesn't count. Get the fuck out of my sight, Santino. Uh, yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Not gonna happen again, sir. Did anyone ever tell you you're a real pain in the ass, Sonny? Only my mother, sir. Still here? I know, sir. Well then... For all the wilds, Sonny, get out of my sight! I don't understand how you do it, Sonny. Do what? You drive him crazy, yet he still doesn't bite your head off. He didn't even suspend you. Because he respects me, Marty. I may be insufferable, but he can't deny I've always brought something to the table. That's why you drive the poor old dog mad? No, I do it because I'm bitter and twisted. Oh, yeah. Sorry, boys. I can't let you do that. You know, protocol. You and protocol, Bosco? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. That's the case, boys, like it or not. Stop harassing the witness. Well, what can I do? Sorry, guys. When did they bring in the trash panda? Not even an hour ago. You're just in time. They haven't taken him into the hole yet. Yeah, I can see. Listen, Mon, uh, would you do us a favor? Can I be honest? Not really. Aw, oh, just a small thing. For old times' sake. Me and my big heart. So, what do you want? Call Bosco over here for some reason, okay? So that we can have a quick talk with Zip. Okay, I guess I can do that. But you owe me one. Well, thank you somehow. I promise. No, no promises this time. Shoes. Shoes? Size 35, high heels, black. Um, yes, ma'am. Good. Hey, Bosco. Yes, ma'am. Come over here for a second. Right away. So, we were just about to listen to some sweet music when, um... Didn't that damn jukebox break all of a sudden? Oh, damn it. Damn it indeed, Zip. There was a wristband behind it, with numbers on it. 984-237-22 to be exact. What? All that from memory? How the hell? I have no idea either, and it scares me too, but that's not the point. Tell us about it. That is, if you want to leave this place on your feet. Okay, okay. You got me. I'll talk, but only if you promise that the cops won't know about this. Do we look like we're on duty? Zip is a real opportunist. 
He's trying to turn everything to his advantage, but we're going to turn the tables. Who did you escape from, and why here, Zip? Why? <laughs> because I like living, that's why. How did you know they were coming for you? I got a tip off from a friend that I should pack my things and go if I want to live. But I had nowhere to run. Yeah, you know me. The hot dog's my everything. So you thought you'd be safe here? Of course. If it's people are everywhere, but uh, eh, maybe it's harder to get rid of me at the PD. Well, I wouldn't be so sure about that. How did you manage to piss off Ibn Wessler? I don't know, all right? I don't have time for this. Sing like a bird, or I can't guarantee your safety. I did something for him, that's all, okay? A tiny little favor. You know how it goes, Sonny. Animals like Wessler make a living out of these kinds of favors. Tiny little favor, eh? Wessler's kind don't send assassins after someone for tiny little favors. You have no idea what's going on in his head nowadays, pal. Fella gone totally insane. What did he have on you, Zip? You don't know that drill. I asked something of him once, and he told me one day he's gonna ask me for something in return. And that day finally came, right? Yeah. And I had to do it. Because even if I got out of it, he dragged me back for good. Or worse. Nail your hide to the wall. <laughs> yeah. That's the least he would do, believe me. What did you have to do for Ibn? I never hurt anyone, all right? Let's make that clear right now. I never said you did. I just had to get rid of a package for the boss. That was the job. Quick, clean, simple, right? Yeah? What kind of package? A very heavy one. Dead bodies are kind of heavy, Zip. How did you know it was a dead body? I didn't. I was bluffing, but uh, thanks for the answer. You lousy chicken. Zip's a secretive little specimen, but knowing his past, it's no surprise. I must take advantage of this and trap him with it. So, a dead body, huh? What kind, exactly? How should I know? What am I, a butcher? A zoologist? You still know something about it. It was wrapped up entirely, okay? I didn't see any of it. It was, uh, I don't know, average, like you and me. Scaly, hairy, furry, feathery, or bald? What kind, exactly? Hey, I don't know, all right? I told you it was wrapped up. If they let you out, what do you think will happen? I don't know, okay? Well, maybe it was a stupid idea coming here, but this was my best stupid idea. Maybe I'll win a few days with it. Or a few hours, more likely. If you help us, maybe we can cover this whole mess up. You mean you can be bought, Sonny? <laughs> what a time to be alive. The unbribable Santino Featherland. I'm suspended, Zip, and I'm talking chicken to raccoon. Oh, I see. You're a foul foul. Why did you keep that wristband? Because it seemed important. And because, you know me, I'm trying to turn every situation to my advantage. That's the way Zip works. How, exactly? Who knows? It seemed important. It just fell out of the body bag, and I thought, look, this shit seems important, so uh, why not? That's why they want to kill you. I have no friggin' way of knowing that. Why don't you ask them, huh? What happened to the body, Zip? I don't know, Sonny. All I had to do was drop it in an abandoned part of the hive. Where starvation's most prevalent, I guess. Where insects fight for their survival, right? I couldn't have found a better way to get rid of a corpse myself. All that fresh meat must have been gone in a matter of minutes. Fuck, I don't know. I didn't stick around to see what happened. Ugh, you make me sick, Zip. You would have done exactly the same thing in my situation. Anyone would have. I got the order, I did what I had to. I wanted to survive. Yeah, that's even for you. Blackmail. Yeah, 
Something like that. Zip may be secretive, but if he manages to open up, he's also honest. He's not trying to change the subject anymore, so I only have one thing left to do. Ask the right questions. So, he wanted to blame it all on the insects. Why would he do that? They're easy prey. Yeah, I get it. Insanely simple, Sonny. Ibn Wesner's not the only one who takes advantage of the tensions, you know. It's the easiest method of sweeping things under the rug. I've heard that Wessler's trying to break into the substitute meat industry. Surprised? What do you think will happen if Wessler saves Roachtown from starvation with a new, cheap, and accessible faux meat product, eh? Boom! He's gonna be a hero. And yeah, maybe he'll get voted into the Council of Twelve. Clucking hell. I'm asking you for the last time. What's with the wristband? I honestly have no idea, Sonny. It simply fell out of the bag when I threw it down in the alley. At first, I wanted to leave it there, but then, uh, well, you'll know me, huh? And that's the whole story? That's the whole story. At first, I thought it was some kind of, uh, code. But on a wristband, eh, it's usually an ID number instead. Like on prisoners? Exactly. But I know from experience that prisoners don't get bands like this. Not in Clawville. It looks more like something from a hospital. Yeah, maybe you're right, Zip. While we're at it, was it Dr. Bubo who gave you the tip-off to get out of the hot dog? Yeah, it was. Why? Thanks, Zip. You've helped us put some vital pieces into place. Well, that's great. That didn't help me, Sonny. I don't want to rot in here or end up in the alley of the hive. Yeah, we'll see what we can do. You gotta help me. Be glad I'm not charging you as an accomplice to murder here and now. Just keep your head down. Understand? I will, boss bird. I will. That's more like it. So you're telling me you have no idea what this is? It's a wristband. I see the same thing as you. This was the only thing left of the dead body. And me, you know me, they don't call me sticky fingers for nothing. So you just took it. Maybe for some blackmailing? Who knows? Maybe it just hurt my sense of justice. I wanted to know who I buried. You're a real bastard, Zip. A real first grade bastard. Should I say thanks? Thanks. Just lay low, Zip. Real low. Thanks for the advice, Sonny. So, where to next? Where did that wristband come from? I got bad news, Marty. I only know one person who knows about medical stuff. Oh, no. We were just there. Sorry, partner. Bubo again. Hello, Ursula, dear. Oh, oh, what's the rush? Is there something wrong? 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 That dim-witted, insane, ragged old, stinky owl, that's what's wrong. Whoa, whoa. It's all right, Ursula. Just tell us what happened. What happened? You happened. And Wester's goons. It was supposed to be the only day of the year we could have relaxed a little. We're sorry, Ursula. You're right. Like I care, Marty. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of the bitter old owl, and I'm tired of waiting. And? Never mind. I'm going. This time, I'm going for good. Hang in there, Ursula. And if there's anything we can do to help. Anything? Of course there is, my dear. I never want to see your faces again. Ouch. I'm going to try to talk to the old owl. All right? <laughs> Good luck with that. Oh, and uh, Ursula, thanks for all you've done for us. With the car. You know, I'm starting to regret it. That was... rough. Yeah, but understandable. I only see Bubo once a year, and <laughs> even that's way too much. A lot of people feel the same about us. Yeah, that's true.
What do you know about this wristband, Bubo? Zip said they gave these to patients in hospitals. That's why we came back to you. Hmm. Something similar, yes, but not exactly the same. It's different. And? And what? Well, what do you think? Where's this from? How the hoot would I know, Sonny? What am I, some kind of psychic? That I put my hands on it and tell you? Okay, let's try another approach. Do you have any idea why Wessler's men were looking for Zip so hard? I don't. How should I know? Why should I care? He had to hide a body. The body of someone Wessler killed. The wristband is from the corpse. Really? Hmm. That rang a bell, old owl. Well, boys, if I'm right, you're in deep shit. That's more like it. Tell us, Bubo. So, Wessler, the wristband, and a corpse, huh? It looks very much like I know the connection. <laughs> or at least I have a hunch. Out with it, owl face. Okay, don't peck me, chickens. Hobart Ibn Wessler has a relative who happens to be a resident at an insane asylum. The band is very likely from there. Wait, a relative? What kind of relative? Yeah. You don't know? I thought you were the detectives. <laughs> anyway, Ibn Wessler has a twin brother, Albert. Albert Wessler. You put it together very skillfully, Marty. Yes, Albert Wessler. He's a madman kept in solitary confinement. Do you think he's the corpse? But why? How the hell should I know that? Thanks, Bubo. If what you told us is true, then this time we'll owe you one. The wonders never cease. So, Albert Wessler. Which asylum do you mean, Bubo? It's got some fancy long name I don't remember, but I have a brochure. Let me find it for you. Thanks, Bubo. Well, here it is. Let there be peace forever. Mental institution for ill and damaged minds. Quite a big fool. Where can we find it? I've never heard of it. It's a good six-hour drive from Clawville. Maybe more. But you'll find everything in the brochure. You're the best, Bubo. You finally proved useful. Whew. Finally? Now get your chicken scratchers out of here while I'm asking nicely. Just one more thing. What's that, Bubo? If that someone was really Albert Wessler, the trouble's bigger than you think. It's always bigger than we think, Bubo. We're used to it. You don't understand. Ibn Wessler never loved and respected anyone in his life like he did his brother Albert. So what? Then the problem's bigger than we thought. A cornered rat bites. Well, thanks for worrying about us, Doc. But there's no way back from here. Too far, too late. We're like hounds, old man. Once we've caught someone's leg, we never let it go. Ooh, not while you're alive, eh? Yeah, exactly. Well, goodbye then, fellas. And I wouldn't mind if you never visited me again. The pleasure was all ours, Doc. We had to gather ourselves, take a deep breath, and think over what we knew so far. What the chickens had I got myself into? What had I dragged Marty into? Moreover, what had we pulled the whole city into? This was gonna be one of those cases that changed things forever. But I wasn't worried about myself. It didn't matter to me. Too many pieces had been plucked off this old rooster. But Marty's different. He's too good of a bird and too good of a cop to end up like me.
A secret twin brother? Sonny, I'm starting to feel like we're really in a detective novel. A cheap one. Yeah, but uh, listen, Marty. What is it, Boss Bird? I think it's best if we go our separate ways. What? Are you joking? I know you have a weak sense of humor, but there's a limit to everything. I'm not joking, Marty. Well, I certainly hope you are. Whatever comes next, you don't need to be mixed up in it. You have someone to go home to. God damn it, Sonny. Can you hear yourself? What do you think? I endured all this to give up now? What do you take me for? No, pal. You're not getting rid of me so easily. I just want you to keep your career and your life intact, you moron. Just accept it, shake my hand, and go home. Your wife, Laura, is waiting for you. One more word, Sonny, and I swear I'm gonna bash your beak in. I risked my life more than once tonight. You know why? No. Why? Because we're a team. We have been a team for almost a decade. Now, I don't care what Blood Boil says or whatever's on a goddamn piece of paper. We're the chicken police, Sonny. And we always will be. I'm sorry. You're right. We're gonna go to that insane asylum and wrap this shit up fast and clean. Yeah, just like you said, even if it kills us. Thanks, Marty. Without you, I'd most likely already be sleeping the big sleep. Birds of a feather flock together, right? <laughs> like you say, partner. Uh, let's drop this before you start crying on me, okay? Yeah, I hope not. You almost just did. Ah, cluck off, Marty. That's the spirit, the Sonny I know and hate. What do you think, Marty? What? You care what I think? You must have hit your head pretty bad. Stop fooling around, Marty. I'm serious. So what do you think about everything? Well, I think we're in deep shit. But to be honest, Eben Wessler is in deeper shit. Do you think he really murdered his brother? But why? And what does it have to do with Natasha and the threats? Uh, it doesn't add up yet. Something's missing. Let's visit the institution and try to find out what we can about this Albert Wessler fella. Exactly. If he's the dead body, we've got to know what the motive was. If we can't, and if he's still alive, we gotta ask him directly. What do you think, Sonny? I think Ibn, Albert, and Natasha are the three key players in this case, and that all of it has something to do with the brothel. And the fact that Natasha used to be a... Uh... <clears throat> Courtesan? Yeah, that too. Listen, Sonny, about Molly. Ah, oh, just forget it, Marty, okay? She's not part of my life anymore. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Forget it. Let's concentrate on the case, and on making it out alive, and helping Natasha too. Whatever you say, Boss Bird. So you think Natasha's really in danger? It could be, or she could even be behind everything. No, you don't believe that. I'm not sure what I believe, Marty. Let's see. Things got mixed up at the brothel. That's obvious. And Ibn wanted to keep that a secret. A secret, it seems. Somebody else had to pay for. Somebody died for that secret. Zip hid the body. But he kept the wristband. belong to. The dead body was almost certainly Albert Wessler, a resident of an insane asylum. But why did he have to die? So what do you think happened to the corpse? Probably been eaten. 
Horrible to think about, but even if half of what they say about the hive is true, starvation, riots, arson, predation. You're telling me. Makes my feathers stand on end when I think about what goes on in there. And we pretend we don't know about it. As if Roachtown isn't even part of Clawville. This won't end well. I'm afraid soon Clawville's gonna burn once again. And because of its own foolishness. Well, that's if another meat war doesn't break out first. Cause then, the whole wilderness will burn. Lovely prospect, eh? Either way, it was a damn clever move for Wessler to hide the body in Roachtown. It's the only place no one will ever find it. Like the belly of a burning ship. Oh, I think that was an intentional red herring. Sounds about right. Okay, so the picture is more or less clear. Ibn's got his brother killed because he learned Natasha worked in a brothel. Now well, that could be the case, but I believe the roots go deeper than that. Which we'd only learn if we talk to him. I mean, if the corpse isn't him, because then we'd need a medium. Which would be exciting, but maybe it's enough if we ask the doctor who treated him. That too, yeah. But where's the fun in that? Where exactly is this place? A few hours drive from here, in the middle of nowhere. It's a creepy old mansion, of course. You think it's a good idea to go there? What if it's a trap? I told you, you can still go back. Huh, wouldn't you love that? No such luck, boss. If I get killed or locked up forever in an insane asylum, that's gonna be on you. Thanks, pal, I deserve that. I'd like to uh, inquire about a patient who I believe is being uh, uh, treated at your institution. Uh, his name is Albert Wessler. I'm sorry, sir, but I can't give out that information if you don't have the password given to relatives. Do you have one? Unfortunately, I don't have that. I'm not a relative. I'm calling from the Clawville Police Department. Oh, I see. In that case, officer, I'd advise you to visit our institution personally. Our director and I would be happy to answer your questions. Thank you, miss. I guess I'll do that. We'll welcome you with open arms, sir. Have yourself a beautiful starlit night. Oh, uh, <laughs> thanks. Uh, goodbye. See you soon. So, we have to go there. Ah, the thought gives me goosebumps. Chicken bumps aren't good enough for you? Ha ha ha. So, I get the couch? It'd be better if I called Lewis. He'll open up a room for you to sleep in. Whew, great idea.
Hey, Lewis, it's, uh, it's me again. Oh, <laughs> hello, Sonny. What's up? Were you sleeping, pal? Me? Oh, I wasn't. Anyway, I'm always at your... Service. Would you open up a room for Marty? Naturally, Sonny. Thanks, Lewis. I'm not even gonna say it. I will. You owe me one. Again. Yeah. Slept like I used to sleep years ago, like a miner or a soldier, empty, dead tired. Then I saw Tessa, my darling little daughter. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't recall her face. I reached out to her, but she just kept getting further and further away. Then I saw Molly, but she wasn't real. Just the ghost of a memory. I'm here, I cried. But all I heard was laughter. Not hers. Who's there? Suddenly, she appeared. Natasha. Just stood there laughing. But her eyes were cold. Then she said something. Painted red. Painted red. Painted red. That was just a dream, Sonny. Nothing more. I looked at Marty and I saw the same thing in his eyes as he probably saw in mine. It's time to hit the brakes, to turn back, go home and forget about all of this. <laughs> of course, I stepped on the gas instead. Honestly, I wasn't expecting anything good, but this... Ooh, just like a horror movie. I was thinking the same. Appearances can be deceiving. Let's hope so. This picture... It's very... Special? This guy seems strangely familiar to me. You don't say. You've been treated here too. That would explain a lot. Oh, don't be stupid. I'm serious. Take a closer look. No. Well? No, it can't be. Are you telling me it's him? M.B. Davis himself? I'm sure of it, pal. It seems the gossip was true. The eternal king of jazz in a madhouse. Oh, no, no, no. Poor devil. Of all the great wild ones... Greetings, miss. Is it really you? Well, uh, yes. Yes, it really is you, the chicken police. I'm afraid so. Oh, of all that's furry and plumy, that's fantastic. Oh, my goodness. Hey, miss, we'd like to ask... Please, don't be scared. I'm just really, really, really excited. You know, I've read every book about you and your adventures, and I even collected newspaper articles when I was a little girl. Indeed. You can't imagine what an honor it is to meet you in person. We really... Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Take a deep breath, Miranda, take a deep breath. Are you okay, miss? Yes, I am. I just needed some... air. So, dear detectives, Santino and Martin, what can I do for you? Well, miss, uh, we have some questions, if you don't mind. I'd love to answer all of your questions, detectives. So 
sorry, but I still can't believe it's really you. Neither can we. You can't imagine how wonderful it is that I can help you in one of your cases. Does this mean it will become a new book? And maybe I will be in it? Uh, miss, those books aren't really... Don't even tell me. No, no, no. I don't want to know. Let it be a surprise instead. No, I, I didn't mean... Leave it to me, Sonny. I'm good at this. Thank you, miss. Your words are very flattering, and we are honored. No, I thank you. I'll never forget this day. We won't either, that's for sure. We're happy to bring you joy, miss. Anytime. Say, miss, uh, what can you tell us about this place? Our institution was standing even before the Great Meat War, and during the war, it was transformed into a military hospital. Since then, we are relentlessly working on treating injured minds under the leadership of Dr. Quetzal, the famous specialist. The place seems pretty empty. Do many people work here? We have 32 residents and seven nurses, including me. We also have a three-person maintenance and cleaning staff and, of course, the heart and soul of our institution, Dr. Quetzal himself. I see. Now, this Dr. Quetzal, is he the director here? Exactly. Director, scientist, researcher, patron, and doctor. And even a friend. Quite a guy. He certainly is. The Lord of the Castle's most likely up there. The Lord of the... So who is this Dr. Quetzal exactly? He's a world-famous researcher of the mind, Mr. Featherland. He published countless books in the fields of psychology and psychotherapy. Psycho... what? Unraveling the mind. It's the most crucial mission of the century, Mr. McChicken. That's really good to know. So this doctor's some celebrity, right? Does he usually meet uh, other important persons? I'm not sure I know what you mean. Well, like uh, Mr. Hobart Wessler, for example. Ah, yes. That's something you should ask the doctor himself, but unfortunately, I don't think he has time right now. He's swamped, is he? Exactly, Mr. Featherland. He is very, very, very busy. All the time. I thought so. Now, what can you say about this, miss? Have you uh, seen anything like it? Of course. Our residents wear these for identification. But how did you come by it? They only wear them inside the institution. Huh. I see. The wristband does belong to one of our residents, but I'm afraid I'm not allowed to tell you more due to regulations. Oh, come on, Miranda. It's us, the chicken police. I'm sorry, I, I can't. Miranda, this case is a matter of life and death. Lives are in your hands. <sighs> All right. All right. I'll do it. Albert... Wessler. The patient's name is Albert Taddeus Wessler. Figures. Just as we thought. Thank you, Miranda. We'll never forget this. Please, don't make me blush. And don't tell anyone you heard it from me. Oh, we won't. I promise. So when can we talk to Mr. Wessler? I need to ask Dr. Quetzal. Please wait here. Thank you. Dr. Quetzal will see you. He's waiting for you in his office. Up the stairs, all the way down the hall, until the last door. What a surprise. It's enough to mention Wessler's name and all the doors are open. I wouldn't want to get mixed up in this, but... Do you think Albert is in danger? Danger? What do you mean? 
We haven't heard from him since he disappeared, and we're really, really worried. I see. Uh, we don't know yet, miss, but let's hope for the best. Great Wild Ones protect him. Where is he? No idea, Marty. The smell ugh, of all that's furry. I'll never get used to it. Well, reptiles have a disgusting body odor, Marty, but they feel exactly the same about us. Exactly. Great Wild Ones, you scared the hell out of me. I already sensed your arrival from afar. You know, snakes have a different sense of smell. And birds used to be our prey once upon a time. Well, yeah. Luckily, we're living in civilized times. Lucky. Please, take a seat. How can I help you, gentlemen? To be honest, gentlemen, your visit is anything but a surprise. I could even say I was expecting it. What an introduction. Please forgive me. I have the bad habit of immediately getting into the middle of things. How very rude of me. My name is Dr. Seth. He was Quetzalcoatl, but most call me Dr. Quetzal to keep it simple. The name is Santino Featherland, and this is my partner, Martin McChicken, from... From the Predatory Division of the Clawville Police Department. Your fame is one step ahead of you. Ah, we're used to it. Certainly. We have some questions about one of your patients, if you don't mind. We'd like to talk to him, if that's possible. Please be specific, Detective. Look, Doctor, we're too tired to play cat and mouse. Not that snake and chicken sounds any better. Very funny, I must say. Just what I expected from you two, Detectives. We know you know it's about Albert Wessler. Ibn Wessler's secret twin. Ever since we've said his name, all the doors have miraculously opened. That's what we call a bullseye. Well, yes. Why should I deny it? We're talking about a rather illustrious patient here, who's also a very particular medical case. Now, that's much more interesting. So, are you willing to talk about him? Because Albert regrettably has disappeared, and you are police detectives, I have no reason not to talk to you. Of course, I'm at your service. But you must understand, I can't disclose information about my patients. Not even if it's a matter of life and death. Everything's a matter of life and death in here, detective. This is a hospital, even if it's primarily for the mind, not the body. Still, I'd like to give the impossible a try. Please, detective, just do your job, and I'll do mine. What kind of a place is this, exactly? I assume it wasn't built as an insane asylum. It used to be a mansion. Construction started during the occupation in 622. Then it stood empty for almost a century, until finally it went to the crown of Clawville when Hector's great-grandfather took the throne. The rest is history. How long have you been working here? I've worked here for more than 30 years, but it's been in my family's possession for almost 150 years. So if I count correctly, as soon as it went to the Crown, it was seized by your family. That's almost accurate, Mr. Featherland. What a lovely inheritance. How long was Albert a resident of the institution? For quite some time. His first symptoms surfaced in his teens. Depression, panic attacks, and schizophrenia. 
Was he brought here immediately after the first signs that something wasn't right? You know, the biggest problem with an opinion on insanity is that animals are ashamed of it. That's the reason our institution stands out here in the middle of nowhere. Because animals would rather hide what they're afraid to face. I couldn't have said it better myself. As far as I know, the Wessler family wasn't exceptionally wealthy. Indeed, they were rather poor, but we offer our services gratis. Then how do you sustain yourselves? By the grace of the treasury of King Hector III, of course. I wouldn't have guessed that. My family and the royal dynasty had always been on good terms, Mr. Santino. Hmm, Dr. Quetzal's a real mystery. But I can turn that to my advantage. I just need to focus on the strangest pieces of the puzzle. So when did Albert become a resident of your institute? Albert and Hobart, or Ibn as you call him, arrived here almost exactly four years ago. Could you describe that day uh, more specifically? It was not long after New Year's Eve, maybe the first week of the year, if I'm not mistaken. It was sleeting that day, wind was banging incessantly on the windows, the power was going out for short periods of time. What was your first impression of them? I already knew the Wessler name. I knew who they were. Or at least I knew one of them. Hobart Wessler. He was famous. Gangster, moneylender, celebrity, lover. And Albert? He was new to me. An invisible grey ghost. The family had tried to keep his existence a secret. Why? Because they were ashamed of him, of course, Mr. Featherland. That's how it usually is. What was your first impression of him? He was silent, but observed everything that surrounded him. His eyes were constantly moving, never stopped for a second. Was he afraid? I wouldn't say so. It seemed to me that he wanted to move into our institution voluntarily. It looked as if he couldn't wait to be here, alone, locked up in silence and darkness. Didn't you think of that as unusual? Of course I did. But who am I to judge? It was rather special treatment. What kind of special treatment did Albert get? You know, if an institution like ours has to accept a Wessler as a guest, there's bound to be some favoritism. And complete secrecy, I guess. Yes, but that's the case for all our patients, Mr. Featherland. Of course. So in what way did he receive more than the others? Basically, we don't admit anyone into our institution without a complete and thorough prior assessment. In the case of Albert, we put that aside. So you didn't even know if he had anything wrong with him? Initially, no. He was more of a guest than a patient. How did you see Albert when you first met? Albert was shy and reserved, like a ghost. He almost never touched anything. It was evident he was exceptionally intelligent. He measured and observed everything around him. What else? He was delicate and graceful, almost like a woman, yes. He was rather feminine. He was an artist, Mr. Featherland, a magnificent painter, and a rather good writer, too. Sometimes I even heard him sing. Why did he have to be locked up? I asked the same thing, 
at first. Are you telling me Albert had multiple personalities? We found out very quickly that there was no other reason for the cause of his seizures. He had a cold and calculating personality who sometimes, especially on stormy days, took the reins over their shared mind. He had these seizures from the beginning. Yes, Mr. Featherland, but they started to intensify after Albert left our institution for the first time. He did what? Left the institution? More than once? Oh, yes, Mr. Featherland. Albert left the institution on several occasions until the last time when he failed to come back. Wetzel's not only very observant, but he's addicted to details. I must focus on that if I want to get closer to the truth. Focus. Addicted to details. When and why did Albert leave the institution for the first time? It was about two years ago. Mr. Hobart Wessler appeared and demanded we let his brother go free. Naturally, we obliged. We had no idea if we'd ever see him again. But you did. He returned the same day. Albert was ecstatic. He was unrestrained. I could almost say <laughs> happy. That was unusual for him. I had never seen him like that before, Mr. Featherland. He just smiled and stared at the empty wall for hours. Did he ever tell you what happened to him outside? Of course he did. Albert and I had a good relationship. He was working on a painting for his brother. Was it a painting of a lovely lady cat? Oh, exactly. So you already knew about that. Yes, Dr. Quetzal, I've seen it. Did Albert tell you how he felt about the painting? From the first moment he loved it. He was fascinated by it. But who could blame him? A little diversity fresh air, a beautiful lady, and of course, on top of all that, he could finally do what he loved best, paint. Which could be a surprisingly effective therapy. It could have been. Unfortunately, these excursions have greatly intensified his seizures. They have become more frequent and extreme. So Albert left on many occasions to continue working on the painting. Exactly, Mr. Featherland. Every time he came back, he was like a different person. But unfortunately, his seizures also multiplied and became more dangerous. More dangerous? Albert was hurting himself. And on one occasion, he even tried to hurt me. It was unprecedented. It seemed his confined personality was taking over their shared mind entirely, piece by piece. Do you think the painting caused it? Not the painting, Mr. Featherland. But its subject. Exactly. He was obsessed right until that fateful day when he returned to us for the last time. What exactly happened that day, Doctor? It wasn't Hobart who brought his brother back that day, but two of his gorillas. Not literally, I mean. And Albert was in a terrible, terrible state. What happened to him? I don't like to talk about that, Mr. Featherland. It could be vital to the case, Dr. Quetzal. Don't back down. Oh, you're right. There's no use turning back now. So, Albert's tongue was torn out 
or cut off, I don't know exactly, and he was blinded in one eye, or rather, one of his eyes was missing entirely. So you're saying Albert was brought back horribly mutilated? Yes. And they didn't give any explanation as to what had happened. They simply told me it was some kind of accident. Dr. Quetzal is cold and professional, but he's also very confused. Maybe it's cruel, but I must exploit his vulnerability if I want to learn everything about Albert. Focus, confused. Maybe it's not easy for you to talk about it, but did you examine his wounds thoroughly? I'm not that kind of doctor, Mr. Featherland, but even I could determine his tongue was either cut out or bitten off, and his eye was gouged out. He also had several broken bones. But there's no doubt it wasn't an accident. I don't believe it was, Mr. Featherland. I totally agree. Concentrate, Doctor. What do you think happened to Albert? I'm sure it was Hobart. He ordered his men to mutilate poor Albert. But why would he do that? Maybe Albert saw something he could accidentally reveal. To whom? The four walls? A couple of crazies? You? To anyone, Mr. Featherland. I don't think it's that simple, Doctor. But thank you for your honest opinion. You're welcome, Detective. What happened then? How did Albert disappear? A few weeks later, Hobart came to visit Albert one more time. Albert had been in terrible condition by then. We even had to transfer him to another cell, a more safe one. What did Hobart do during the visit? He didn't do anything. He just sat and watched his brother, who was <sighs> in an almost vegetative state by then. Couldn't you manage to draw anything out of him? You or Hobart? Nothing. For a while, he was trying to signal something. Perhaps he was too afraid. And most likely his fingers had been broken too, so he couldn't even write. Do you think Hobart could have killed Albert? It's horrible to say it, but I'm sure of it. How did he disappear in the end? Did someone come for him? That's what's most eerie about it all, Mr. Featherland. He simply disappeared. His door, which only I had a key for, was open. Did anyone see anything? No one. We interrogated the staff, even the patients. He simply vanished off the face of the wilderness. We don't know what happened to him. Unfortunately, I have a hunch. Thank you, Doctor. You've been a great help. Oh, well, I'm glad I could be of help. But please, I now must attend to my work. We understand, Doctor. Thank you. That's quite shocking information. I think you understand why we kept it a secret. If it wasn't for Mr. Wessler's demand, we'd never let any of our patients walk freely outside our institution. Then the, uh, the accident happened. Accident? <laughs> we didn't believe it, not for a second. After Albert came back to us, horribly mutilated, he was different. Different how? If someone got one of his eyes poked out and his tongue torn out, he'd be different, but not like this. Albert was a different person. We believe you, Doctor. So, can we take a look at Albert's cell? 
I'd rather call it his room. Mr. Wessler lived in exceptional circumstances. Thanks to the Wessler name, I guess. Yes. Well, we try to make all of our patients stay as comfortable as possible, but Albert certainly enjoyed mm, special favoritism. I hope you don't mind if we take a look around in there. That's not going to bother anyone. Well, that's, uh, surprising. I've never seen a cell like this before, that's for sure. I wouldn't mind living here myself. It seems that being a Wessler gets you privileges. And a healthy dose of danger. Mostly that, yeah. Let's take a good look around. I'm sure we'll find some answers here. I can almost smell them. Well, I smell... paint? Ink? Plaster? Some kind of oil? Aging paper? Slight smell of rat? And... Great expectations. What the dickens? Unmistakable. Yeah. This place is bad for you, pal. But if you've already jump-started your beak holes, then sniff out the solution. I'm on it, boss bird. The style. It's very familiar to me. You've been lonely for far too long, huh? Not funny, Marty. It is, a little. Identical twins. And looking at it, they may have easily loved the same woman. Two men and one woman. Nothing good ever comes of that. <clears throat> well, I wouldn't say that exactly. Of all the wild ones, Marty, please, stitch up your beak, okay? Just use your imagination, old bird. Look at that. A letter. Albert was madly in love with Natasha and would have done anything for her. I'm afraid he did exactly that. What do you make of this? Apart from the fact the guy was totally insane? I don't know. What should I? That maybe we've been chasing the wrong person all this time, Marty. What do you mean? Everything will be revealed soon. Why do you have to be so melodramatic all of a sudden? If I'm right, this'll flip the whole case upside down. What's that, Sonny? A blurb from some horrible novel? I just have to think things through before I come to any hasty conclusions, Marty. Ugh, you're killing me. So, what now? Where to? Back to Clawville, where we can finally put all the pieces together. <sighs> you're driving me crazy. But all right, let's go home. Oh, I don't believe this. Those two again? Take them out. My car won't last much longer. Don't worry, Sonny. I was born to do this. Concentrate, Marty, for the God's sake. Can you drive like you're not a fucking lunatic? Shut up and shoot, you big feather pillow.
Well, that was close. A little too close for my taste. And it only strengthens my belief. Wessler is desperate. He knows if we survive, he's done for. Well, come on, what did you work out? Will you tell me already? Sure. Let's put the picture together, piece by piece. Let's start from the beginning. So, we got a case. tried to show us the painting. And that painting would have shown us the way. Gibbon and Albert Wessler. Albert painted Natasha, so he met her on more than one occasion. Which made Albert... ...fall in love with Natasha. And on a fateful night, he killed his brother so he could take his place in secret and win Natasha's heart. So what happens now? The inevitable, Marty. We're going to the Wessler Mansion to confront Ibn with the facts. You mean Albert, right? Yeah, exactly. And of course, Natasha. Do you think she knew about it? Something stinks, Marty. The whole case seems too intricate. Hmm. Too many coincidences, right? Well, well, after ten years, you did learn something, didn't you? Nine. <laughs> You're right. Huh. What? You just laughed, Sonny. What? No, I... I... I snorted. No, you laughed. Ah, just leave it, Marty. <laughs> I'll be telling this to my grandchicks. <laughs> All right, pal, that's enough. Okay, okay. So, Albert fell madly in love with Natasha and decided to have her for himself. And his best chance was to trade places with Ibn Wessler. So that's why the torn out tongue. Yeah, Ibn couldn't squeal even if he wanted to. What a diabolical plan. More like insane. But why the messages then? Why the threats? Albert got what he wanted. He could have got away with it. I'm not a psychologist, Marty. But remember what the doctor told us. Albert has a seriously injured mind and a split personality. I think his two identities were at war with each other. So the messages were written by one of his personalities, consumed by jealousy? Something like that, Marty. But we can only learn the whole truth from him. You're right. So, are we going or what? We're going, Marty, to finally finish what we started. Well, if there's anything you'd like to do before, do it now, boss. You won't have a chance later. You're right, Marty. It's time to wrap everything up. Lewis became kind of part of the team in the end, didn't he? You mean Leopold? Damn it, did I mess that up again? No, I'm just joking, you said it right this time. Huh. Look, Sonny, I think if we go now, there's no turning back. Not today, at least. So, are you ready? I'm still thinking about it, Marty. forget anything, Sonny? No, I just thought I'd take a look. Might be the last time I see it. You becoming sentimental? Who knows? Maybe I am. Oh, that's cute. Should I say it? 
I know, Sonny. I can still get out. But you won't. On the beak. Thanks, pal. Forget about it. I'd be bored to death otherwise. You know, pulling the trigger was the toughest decision of my life. You mean when you shot me? Yeah. But it wasn't hard, because you thought you'd kill me. Not at all, Sonny. I knew you'd survive. I wanted it to be a permanent injury and hurt like clucking hell. But I knew that everything would change from then on. That something was gonna break between us? Yeah, and that I was never gonna be the same either. With that shot, I also gunned down who I was, you know? It really did hurt like hell. I know. I almost bled to death. Almost was the goal. Well, what hurt me wasn't what you did. I mean, of course it did, but what hurt the most was you not trusting me. That you didn't believe me. Not until you pulled the trigger. At that moment, I knew you were right. Ah, uh, cluck. Yeah, cluck. All right, enough sentimental crap. We have an insane rat waiting to be put behind bars and a woman you gotta get. What? Come on, Sonny. Even a blind bat can see it. Oh, well. Clock again. Yep. You didn't have the chance to tell me what happened to your brother. He left Clawville, and I haven't talked to him since. Oh. I'm sorry. But I received an unexpected letter two weeks ago from the Sura province. Someone dropped it off at my door. Was it him? He wrote the letter, that's for sure. I could smell the jungle when I opened it. But whether he was the one who delivered it, I don't know. Have you tried to find him? He'll find me if he wants to, Sonny. I know he's not guilty, and that's enough. But he's still wanted in Clawville, right? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry for playing a part in all of this. I know, Sonny. The past is the past. You know, you've truly changed, Marty. You try to hide it, but you've changed. Thanks, boss. Just, uh, don't call me boss, okay? We're partners. Well, if we have anything else to ask the old beaver, this is the last chance. Hey, don't steal my style. Just learning from the best. Let me give you some advice. Don't. Oh, look what I found. Furry gods, another chicken police story. And one of my favorites too. Meredith outdid herself when she wrote this one. Yeah, I can imagine. You know, Sonny, you could read one one day. They're not as bad as you think. If it's about me, and you, then I want none of it, thanks. Reality's more than enough. So, we're looking for more evidence? No, I was just thinking we could take another look. You know, just in case. Mmm, okay, sure. But... Don't even ask, Marty. You're really becoming sentimental. One more word and I swear I'm... Yep, I'm gonna shut it. You don't want to go in there just like that. It's a closed crime scene. I hope you're just messing with me, Marty. Of course I'm messing with you. Let's get inside there and see how much the boys have messed up the place. You know, Sonny, when we entered the room and saw the girl... Deborah. Yeah, her body. I called you every name in the book inside my head. I just had enough, you know? I wanted to quit. What kept you with me? Was it just curiosity? No. I just wanted to see your downfall, boss. I wanted to be there when you met your end, get humiliated or even shot. 
Wow. Well, thanks for your honesty, Marty. But then everything changed on the ship. On the ship? Why there? I don't know. Being tied up with you, waiting for certain death. I know I lashed out at you, but in truth, I felt there was no place I'd rather be. It was my place on that fucking burning ship with you, even if we both died there. Know what I mean? I think I do, Marty. I think I do. So, I guess there's nowhere to go but forward, huh? Nothing left to do but kill a rat. As the chicken police. For the last time? For the last clucking time, partner. Swear? I swear. All right. Let's hit the road. Ah, you know, Sonny, few places are as cozy as the hop dog at dawn. You have a point. The silence, the fog, the sunshine slowly devouring the sleeping city. The smell. Yeah, the cobbler district has its own distinctive aroma, that's for sure. But wait, do you smell that? Ah, it seems Zip is ready with the first batch of coffee. That's waiting only for us, my friend. No hard feelings? What can I say, boys? I have a big, soft heart. You sure do, Ursula. Would you like a nice hot cup of tea? No, thanks. We just came to say goodbye. Why? You going somewhere? Traveling? Uh, no, we're just uh, visiting a, uh, a nice place in the city. Sonny's gonna die. Shut up, Marty. So it's a case. Well, be careful, boys. And I'm sorry I snapped at you the last time. You don't need to say that, Ursula. We deserved it. You're a good boy, Sonny. And Marty's a downright saint. Oh, come on, Ursula. Stop that. How is the old owl? He's old and grumpy. But he's always like that. Wait a minute. Isn't he supposed to sleep now? He is. I mean, Reginald's never truly asleep. Not entirely. He just shuts down. Even now? Yes. I gotta see that. The sun was shining, and all the ducks were in a row. I felt ready. The pieces of the grand puzzle were laid out on the table. I just needed to piece them all together. A revealing glance or a careless word, and I'd have the answer. I knew we were in the right place. I knew it was nearly over. Was Natasha really just a victim? Or did she know everything? Was she controlling the puppets from behind the curtain? Well, if you don't know where to go, go straight ahead. What could possibly go wrong? Here I am, Natasha. I hope you're waiting for me. Furry gods. I knew he was rich, but wow. Half the city is in his hands, Marty, and half the Council of Twelve. I think we'll catch a big fish today. Don't count your chickens. I'm sure Wessler's expecting us, and Natasha too, I hope. You hope? 
If I'm right, she could be our only chance of survival. Lovely prospects, huh? I've had worse. Really? Hey, not so fast, chickens. Please excuse my partner. He didn't mean to be rude, it's just his uh, terrible habits, as you may already know. Ah, look what the cat dragged in. Funny, I don't recognize them. Well, maybe if they had some guns with them? Tommy guns? Oh yeah, now I remember. The two suckers in the luxury van you shot to pieces. Twice. Exactly. <sighs> what are you doing here, chickens? Would you like us to finish what we started? We'd love to have fun with you boys, but we need to talk to your boss. And while we're at it, the lady of the house is also expecting us. Is that so? Yeah, that's so horny. In that case, I guess there's no reason for us to waste your precious time. Is that right, Gabriel? Oh, get the hell out of our sights while there are still feathers on your skin, chickens. Easy, pal. We're not even here anymore. Until next time, boys. This must lead to Wessler and Natasha's suite. Well, let's get the big guns out and kick the door down. No need for that, Marty. We'll wait until they invite us in, like real gentlemen. Then maybe we'll need the guns. But I hope it won't come to that. Oh, my trigger finger's itching, Sonny. Someone's gotta pay. Relax, Marty. Someone is gonna pay. Tonight. Yeah. Just don't let it be us. Ah, what a pleasant surprise. Hello, Olivia. Sweetie. Get lost. Uh, what did you say, ma'am? Turn around and get the hell out of here now, if you want to make it out with feathers intact. <laughs> Come on, Olivia. Don't worry about us. We know what we're doing. Martin! Huh? Don't you get it? You have to get out of here or you'll be in danger, and also her. Do you mean Natasha? Please calm down, miss. We have to talk to Mr. Wessler and Miss Katsenko. You really don't understand, do you? What do they not understand, Olivia? So, what is it exactly that our guests don't understand? I was trying to tell the detectives that Mr. Wessler's very tired and doesn't welcome guests this early. He gets rather irate if he's being disturbed at this hour. I'm sure Mr. Featherland and Mr. McChicken can wait here while Ibn refreshes himself. I'll entertain them until then. Thank you, Miss, uh, Kitsenko. Please, Sonny. I thought we've already discussed this. Call me Natasha. Uh... <clears throat> Please, Natasha, can we talk to you in private? Martin? It's all right, Olivia. These gentlemen are my friends. Yes, Miss Katsenko. The truth is, Ibn isn't really in a good shape today, gentlemen. He's rather furious. Are you sure this can't wait? You commissioned us, Natasha, and we barely escaped with our combs intact. So you know who left the threats? Oh, we know much more than that, Natasha. We even know where you used to work. We talked to Madame Zavas. Wild gods! Why didn't you tell us? Do you think it's easy for a woman to talk about such things that she used to be an escort? Along with Molly? So you know. Yeah, I know, Natasha. I also know all of this was a trap. Believe me, I tried to handle things the least painfully I could. You weren't even supposed to know. A lot shouldn't have happened. Poor Deborah shouldn't have had to die. Dear sweet Deborah. Cold, stiff Deborah. Please don't say that. A price worth paying? You cannot think I had anything to do with that. You just cannot. I don't know, Natasha. 
Please, Sonny, tell me what is going on. You have to know, right? Please. Excuse me for making you wait, detectives. I'm having a rough morning after a long night. Is that so? Our night was also kind of long. To put it mildly. I was just telling the gentlemen that you were exhausted, my dear, and they should come back another time. I'll escort them out. Oh, honey, no need for that. My door is always open to the legendary chicken police. Please, uh, come on in, guys. Let's not talk in my room. Then this way, please. You just stay here, my darling. I'm sure our conversation will bore you to death. Please, uh, go and refresh yourself or uh, tell Olivia to go make some coffee. Yes, dear. Whatever you like. Please, uh, follow me, gents. Lead on, Wessler. So long, sweetheart. Goodbye. This painting, it's beautiful and rather provocative. Almost makes my comb stand up. I'm not surprised. But the corner is missing. You're right, Sonny. You're quite the observer. Well, yeah, this painting's unfortunately damaged. I don't know where the missing piece could be. You don't know? Well, if you're interested, we know exactly where it is. Really? Really. It's here with us. An insignificant little piece, isn't it? But there's an exciting cat scratch on it. More like a rat scratch, because it's a monogram. A.W. That's... Albert Wessler. He's a great painter. I don't know if you've heard of him. Enough! Out with it already. What are you trying to say? I have no time for your childish charades. Easy, Wessler. We'll get to that in a bit. You've been through a rather eventful few days. Oh, you have rather good informants. Yeah, that's true. I should tell you, I see and hear everything that happens in the city. And you, uh, you are exceptionally resilient. No offense. None taken. But tell me, are we gonna flatter each other for a long time, or are we finally done with the courting? Straight to the point. I like it. Yeah, so let's continue like that, shall we? What do you want? How dare you intrude upon me in my own house? Oh, forgive us. Our moral compass has been confused a little bit after someone tried to kill us several times in the last 48 hours. With fire, with machine guns, I could go on. And while we're at it, you could answer some of our questions. If you've nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. And then we'll just leave you alone. All right. I'll go along with your childish little game. I would have had a long and tedious day ahead of me anyway. So, can we start? With pleasure, Mr. Wessler. I have no idea what she sees in you, but Natasha's been seriously worried about you. Yeah, she, uh really worries more than usual, but it's understandable. Those disgusting messages. Disgusting, all right. Do you know why that word exactly? Why did they write that specific word everywhere? Since, uh, since uh, you've been to the Nile, I guess you know the answer to your question. Didn't it bother you, Wessler, what Natasha used to do? Surely it must have upset you. Why? Did it upset you when you discovered your wife did the same thing? What did you just say? What did you think, chicken? That I didn't know? Yeah, don't make me laugh. I know about everyone who ever set foot in that place. I can even tell you who Molly's regulars were, if you're interested. 
You son of a bitch. Sonny, don't. Yes, detective? Not yet. You're right, Marty. It's not worth it. You're funny, you know that? About the painting. Yeah. My brother Albert made it. He's a great talent, but, uh, still, uh, he's a rather troubled individual. Such self-criticism. What did you say? My partner means that you and your brother are very much alike. Identical twins, if I'm not mistaken. Indeed. But, uh, what does that have to do with the painting? We'll get to that. Don't worry, Mr. Wessler. So Albert made the painting at your request, is that right? And the one that's in Natasha's room in the Tsar, too. Yeah, exactly. Is that a crime? No, it's not a crime in itself. This picture, it's rather strange, you know? Why do you think so? It's just me, Natasha, and my brother. The photo doesn't tell much in itself, yes. But if you already have the right information, suddenly it starts to talk. Really? He fell in love with her, didn't he? Who do you mean? Albert, of course. He fell in love with Natasha. All those sessions while he was painting the pictures. Were you there every time? You mean, uh, me? You. No, I mean, while Albert was painting, yeah, but I wasn't there all the time. Albert was there, all along. And do you think he could have fallen in love with Natasha? That's why he escaped? What do you think happened to him? Who tore out his tongue? Eh, I have no idea. Did Natasha know about what happened to your brother? No, of course not. Do you love beautiful things, Wesler? I... eh... Why do you ask that? Yeah, of course. You were afraid of losing her, weren't you? To him. Stop. Enough. If you want to ask something, ask clearly. Don't play with me. You understand? We're just doing our job. Then do it clearly. And quickly. Yeah, I'm really starting to lose my patience. We visited Albert's cell and found something he seems to have... Uh, forgotten to take with him in his great hurry. That's a big mistake. A classic, even. What the hell are you babbling about? This is Albert Wessler's love letter to Natasha. More like a confession. In which he tells her he's capable of doing anything for her, even the most horrible things. Yeah, this letter doesn't prove anything at all. Albert is mad, insane. He's not, a uh, normal. No one would believe his word, don't you understand? But they believe yours, right? Because you're not Albert Wessler. You're Hobart Ibn Wessler, aren't you? How good it feels to be in his skin. How dare you? Just tell him, Sonny. I'm getting tired of this. You're just a cheap fake, Albert. You couldn't follow in your brother's footsteps even if you wanted to. No matter how hard you tried, you couldn't get Natasha either. Am I right? What? What did you just say? She hates you, doesn't she? She doesn't know. She doesn't understand why. But she hates you. It's instinctive. Yeah, what do you know? What could you possibly know about suffering and loneliness and the darkness? What could you know about hate, huh? Albert is an imposter. He's not who he says he is, and might not even know who he really is. I have to concentrate on this first, to soften him up. And to avoid us being shot in the gizzard, of course. What were you thinking, Albert? How long did you think you could keep it up? Until the end of my life, if needs. Yeah, I cared about nothing except for her to love me. Not for who Ibn was, but for who I am. Why did you think that would happen? Everybody noticed the change. Yeah, I knew it would be hard, Santino. 
but I also know animals see what they want to see. Eh, I didn't have to behave like Ibn. They only had to believe I'm him. Why did you decide to take your brother's place? Yeah, as you're curious. From the moment I laid eyes on Natasha for the first time. But I had to convince myself that this was the only way. You've never talked about your feelings for Natasha with your brother, am I right? Are you insane? Yeah, Abel would have had me killed immediately. And no one would ever know. So instead, you've done the same thing, haven't you? What a comfortable excuse. Comfortable? Do you think all of this was just some kind of cruel game for me? I had to destroy the person I loved and respected the most. Cry me a river. You know, there's only a thin, fragile membrane between love and hate. If anything touches it, it tears immediately. You've felt like this before, haven't you? Eh, I can see it in your eyes. You can analyze me until the sun goes down, Wessler. But you won't get far with that. Yeah, evasive answer. So I'm right. Did you ever believe that you were Ibn Wessler? Did I ever believe? I still do. I believed it all along. Don't you get it? I am Eben Wessler. And also, Albert Wessler. I see you're starting to understand. So you feel you're two people at the same time, even now. Does it sound crazy? Maybe it is. But Ibn lives inside me. Sometimes he's even stronger than Albert ever was. Do you think you can avoid the gas chamber with this, Albert? Eh, I don't have to avoid anything, Sonny. You and your friend, uh, will never leave this place. It's better if you start getting used to the thought. You're not the cold-blooded killer you'd like to think you are. Eh, do you think so? Try me, detective. What made you think you could deceive Natasha? Because Natasha loved Ibn, in her own unique way. Yeah, and if there's anything that can blind an animal, it's love and hate. Everything revolves around these two things, Mr. Featherland. Is everything black and white to you? No. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Everything's gray in this world. Only two things have color. Love and hate. I see you understand now, Sonny. Yeah, we're not that different, you and I. Albert, you're everything I'm not. And I'm everything you're not, believe me. Yeah, if that makes it easier for you, detective. That was your plan. Take his place and live happily ever after. Why, isn't it good enough of a plan, Mr. Featherland? It was perfect, even in its imperfection. Which is? Ibn's ghost. Is is what? Uh, please don't take it literally, Mr. Chicken. I'm not talking about the uh, spirits. Mm. When Ibn died, I didn't just take his place, but also his role. He himself, uh, his essence, if you will. Yeah, though I guess that's uh, too much for you to understand. So you mean Ibn's here with us even now? He was here all along. Don't you get it? I am Hobart Ibn Wessler. I must get serious, because looking at the gun in Wessler's trembling hand, I'm afraid I don't have much time. Albert is a cruel psychopath, but maybe I can turn that cruelty against him. When was the moment you decided to kill him, Albert? When I drew the last stroke on that fatal painting, Mr. Fitherland. When I glanced at it for the last time, and then at the Tasha who was shivering under the weight of my gaze. You simply fell in love with her? End of story? Not in the slightest, Mr. Featherland. Love is, uh, just chemistry. What I felt was more than that. Everybody thinks that, Albert. But we all feel the same. We're just fools. No, Mr. Featherland. Not at all. At that moment, I knew what I was gonna do. I knew that the world was coming to an end if I didn't do it. It implodes on itself and ceases to exist. 
I couldn't let that happen. I couldn't. Let him have her, right? You simply wanted her for yourself. I wanted her for ourselves, Sonny. I was him by then. He just didn't know it yet. Do you think you can explain everything with your insanity? Don't be a fool, Sonny. Insanity is just a temporary state. Just a stop on the way to enlightenment. So you admit you're insane. That's surprising for your kind. Of course I'm not insane. Ah, well, here we are. Albert was insane. He lost all connections to reality. But I saved him. You mean... You're Ibn? Both of us, Mr. Featherland. Okay. I almost understand everything now. Don't mock me, Mr. Featherland. You're still at the wrong end of the gun, you remember. It would be hard to forget. When did you decide that we too have to die? Can I be honest? I didn't want to hurt you, even after what you've done at the club, after interrogating Natasha and me so cruelly. I didn't care. You just saw what's on the outside, just scratching the surface. Until we found Deborah. I didn't even know about you finding her until the phone call from the Nile. Then it all became clear. I understood I underestimated you. I had to remedy that mistake before it was too late. You remove anyone if they happen to cross your path, don't you? Without batting an eye. Ibn had always been like that. Albert the opposite, so don't think I wasn't struggling, but, uh, eventually, yeah. Courage won, every time. You mean fear? Yeah. What do you know about these concepts, Detective? You've spent your life chasing petty nobodies until you turned into one of them. I may be a nobody, Mr. Wessler, but at least I know who and what I am. I'm Santino Featherland. Tell me, can you still tell who you really are? Albert, Ibn, both of them, neither. Enough, Santino. Enough games. Ask your last question before I get tired of you and pull the trigger. I'm very close to breaking him, but if I'm too hard on him, I could quickly be signing my death warrant. It's time to dig a little bit deeper and uncover Wessler's wounds. Natasha was kind to you, right? Too kind. Natasha was a... simply amazing, gentle, kind, lively, but still so, uh, distant. You're telling me. It's like she was from another world. A world where everything's full of charm and grace and everything's fragile and delicate. Uh, do you understand? I think I do, yes. I knew Albert's touch would harm her. Albert is rough. Albert can't keep such a delicate thing in his arms. That's why you had to become Ibn, am I right? I didn't take Ibn's place, Mr. Featherland. I became one with him, can't you see? This is the only way I could comprehend and accept the miracle that was Natasha. Was? I... I think I've corrupted her. She's not that gentle and pure creature I painted on the canvas anymore. I ruined her. She became rotten under my hands. Maybe it's not too late, Albert. Tell her the truth and end this. No! You can't understand this. She can't either. I killed Ibn, but he also killed me, can't you see? We're nothing without each other. You can't be two people at the same time, Albert. Nobody can bear the weight of the sins of two souls. Ibn loved her. I admired her. Ibn was crazy about her. I've been crazy for a long time. Ibn idolized her, and I hated her. And if there's anything more blind, more devoted, more extreme, and more true than love, it could only be hate, Mr. Featherland. It's an endlessly exciting, thrilling, and warm feeling. And infinitely red. Just like love. You know you're not going to be able to go through with it, right? That you won't be able to carry the weight. But you still did it. Why? Yeah... If I didn't kill him and become one with him, Albert would have died, Mr. Featherland. And the threats? Which one of you was that? Albert or Ibn? Who 
wrote them? And which one of you killed Deborah? In my world, Ibn and I are inseparable. Just like love and hate are one and the same. And I hate Natasha so much that I could destroy myself along with her, just so she would die with me. Are you familiar with this feeling, Mr. Featherland? More than life itself. You see? We're not so different after all. You and I have nothing in common, Wessler. You know why? Why, Mr. Featherland? Because if I were in your shoes, I would have pulled the trigger a long time ago. Goodbye, Sonny. So long, Albert. So, you heard everything. I heard everything. I'm sorry you had to find out like this. And thank you. If it weren't for you... Yes, both of you would be dead, I know. But believe me, I still thought carefully before firing. About who to target? You know, I truly loved Ibn. But this man wasn't him. You felt it, didn't you? Maybe I even knew it. I don't know. But I still can't believe it. It won't be easy to process for any of us. I'm sorry I dragged you into this. And regarding Molly... The cops. But how? How do they know? I have no idea, Marty. Do not look at me. I did not call them. Olivia? Don't worry, Natasha. They won't lay a finger on you. I promise. Please, Sonny. You don't need to worry about me. I don't want to be rude, Sonny, but I'm more worried about us than her. Hello, boss. Hello, boys. Now, before you say anything, we can explain. No need for that, Sanjino. Monica already told me everything. Monica? Hey, boys. What were you thinking? That I would just let you get killed without saying goodbye? Thanks, Mon. Should we say we uh, owe you one? You know already, boys. Shoes are my weakness. Hey, mine too. Of all that's furry, we don't want to hear that. And boys... Uh, yes, boss? Don't believe you'll get away with it so easily. I want a report on my desk from both of you with all the details. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. It'll all make sense, believe us. Right after I figure out myself what the hell just happened. What Marty's trying to tell you is that we had good reason to investigate outside the law. But we're sorry. What happened to you, Sonny? You're sorry? Did you hit your head? Why does everybody keep asking that? Why indeed. So can we go now, boss? W without getting handcuffed? Don't give me ideas, Santino. <laughs> Thanks, boss. Damn, I wouldn't have thought it, but I'm glad the old hound's here. What? Are you waiting for me to change my mind? Uh, no, sir. Then stop pecking around here. Yes, sir. Santino, you're doing that on purpose? No, sir. Never, sir. Then get the fuck out of here. Huh. One of Wessler's ancestors, maybe. Wessler's ancestors were poor cobblers. 
More likely, this represents what he thinks of himself. I wonder how chivalry is compatible with organized crime. Eben was planning to leave the underworld. When his twin brother tore out his tongue, poked out his eye, killed him, and took his place? Yeah. You, what are you doing here? I was just driving around, you know. Trying to feed your grandpa? So, was it a case? Were you, uh, maybe investigating us? What can I say, Sonny? Am I busted? Did someone hire you to follow us? I just had to keep an eye on you and not get involved. That's all. I admit there were a couple of crazy situations when it was hard not to. But you managed somehow, right? A professional's a professional, my friend. Yeah, thanks. So you won't tell us who hired you, whatever we do? Unfortunately, I can't, my friend. I made a promise. You and your promises. Some people still take them seriously. You're a real piece of guano. You and your promises. Some people still take them seriously. You're a real piece of guano. You know that? Of course. I've learned everything from you, you old fart. How the hell did you find your way here, Tim? Always where the trouble is. Sometimes I think you're the criminal mastermind behind all the dark dealings in this city. <laughs> I wish. I wish too, because then we could legally throw you in jail. <laughs> I love your sense of humor, Sonny. <laughs> I wasn't joking. So, where did you get the scoop? Are you kidding me? The whole city's talking about you. You've left quite the mess behind. That, I admit. Well, it's a miracle that all of the city smear sheet journalists aren't here already. Oh, while we're at it, will you give me an exclusive interview? Pluck off, Tim. Hey! Just one quote, guys. They say you've taken down the whole Wessler Empire. They say... I say you're full of shit, Tim. And you can quote me on that. So, what now? Where to next? I think I should mourn, right? You should. But I don't know what to feel anymore, Sonny. I understand, Natasha. You know, if you need anything... Yes, I know where to find you. See you around, sweetheart. Ma'am? Goodbye, detectives. And what about you, Sonny? I'll go home and sleep. Maybe for three days. I'll try to forget. I'm sorry I dragged you into this. If there's anything I can do. I'm not sorry, Natasha. It's better this way. We find out painful truths, but at least we see clearly now, don't we? Yes, I think you're right. Thanks again, Mon. If not for you, those furheads would have put holes in us. No wonder, since you put holes in there, boss. Well, actually, that wasn't us. Then who was it? Natasha. Really? Hmm, I wouldn't have thought it of her. It's a pleasant surprise. It was for us, too, believe me. How did you know we were here? I always pay attention, Sonny. And because I know you like you are my own nestlings. No, I love it when you say pretty little things like that. Don't get used to it, Marty. You're a good boy, Bosco. Nice work. You know, folks, somebody's got to take care of the real police work while you're tearing up the city. Sorry for the mess, Bosco, but you know us. Yeah. Unfortunately, I do. How did you catch them? After the gunshot, I was sure these two would show up. They have a habit of doing that. They were already in cuffs before then, Sonny. We had the house surrounded. If you could have hung on, maybe nobody would have died. Hey, a second longer and it would have been us. <laughs> That's your story. Lucky you sideways, Bosco. 
Nice catch, Bosco. You can mount them on your wall as trophies. Yeah, I wish I could, Sonny. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. We're honestly very sorry it had to end like this. Yeah, this peacefully. For myself, I'm glad, gentlemen. I would have sincerely regretted it if we had to shoot both of you, but unfortunately, that seemed to be the only solution to this uh, rather nasty situation. Fortunately, it didn't turn out that way. Joyful. Don't think we'll be behind bars for long chickens. Whistler may be dead, but his empire still won't crumble. Oh, look at that, he can talk. In complex sentences, too. Yeah, or well, something like that. Amazing. Hey, Olivia. Marty? I just, uh, wanted to thank you. For what exactly? For trying to save us. I didn't do it only for you, believe me. I loved my job while I had it. Now my employee is dead, so I don't have a job anymore. I didn't even think of that. Of course you didn't. Can I do anything to help? I think I'll manage. I always do. So, here they are, ladies and gentlemen. The chicken police, in the flesh. Damn it, Tim, drop it and cluck off. No, no, boys. This time, you deserve it. What the cluck did you say, boss? Stand up straight and try to look like someone who's glad to be alive. Uh... Yes, sir, we'll try. Ooh, attention chicken police, say cheese. You were expecting me, weren't you? I wouldn't say that, but I'm not surprised. I just wanted to talk to you. About what, exactly? You know very well. What do you think, Natasha? Why didn't she tell me? Because she loved you. Yeah. If it wasn't for you, she may have never left the place. Perhaps she'd still be there. Ah, sheep shit. We used to dream about falling in love with a nice man who comes and saves us someday. A knight in shining armor. You know, like, like in the fairy tales. And how did that work out for you? She fell in love with a good guy. I didn't. I envy her. I'm not that good guy, Natasha. But if it's any consolation, she could have found him. Maybe she's living with him right now. Somewhere on the other side of the world. Well, goodbye, Sonny. So long, sweetheart. Hey, Natasha, you have a light? I've been trying to smoke this sorry-ass cig all day. It's driving me crazy. Maybe you don't really need it. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Maybe. <laughs> 